Okay, hey everybody, how are you doing? Teching and Barry back again with the video. Not just a video, but the video. The quintessential video, alright? Every other video you will watch on the internet in the future will pale in comparison to this video right here. We all knew this one was coming, okay? Every single person that has watched my channel for any length of time from 10 years to one month knew this video was going to happen all right so welcome to which one piece character would make the best baker in a bakery here it is can you hear me oda can you hear me in your splendor <laughs> this is all for you oda this is all for you <laughs> <sighs> Alrighty then. So, as you can see on my right, we have ourselves a tier list. Now, I don't usually do tier list videos on the channel. I get recommendations to do them all the time, though. People are always asking, you know, Teching, you need to do more tier list videos. You know, rank the Straw Hats, rank the Seven Warlords, and I'm just like, eh, not really my style. But for this one, it has to be done. So, we have on this tier list, uh, one, two, three, four, fifty-six One Piece characters. Now, I tried to pick, like, the most notable One Piece characters from most of the main groups, like, all the Straw Hats are on here, obviously. Yamato is included. We also have the Warlords, the Yonko, uh, the Straw Hat Grand Fleet is on here. A lot of the villains are on here. The Admirals are on here. Obviously, I could not have included every single One Piece character in the entire story. But, uh, yeah, this is what we have to work with here. These 56 characters, all right? Now, it's important to keep in mind here, the running gag on the channel was, after a One Piece character is done with One Piece stuff, they decide to go and start a bakery after. I did not say they just like to bake. I did not say they like to go home and just use their oven to make some cookies or whatever. No, I said they start a bakery. Now, that's a small business right there. You gotta get loans out for that kind of stuff, alright? So there's a lot of other stuff going on here than just being really good at baking uh, pastries or whatever, you know what I mean? There's a whole business back end to this. Interior design, you know, nobody's gonna come eat your delicious uh, brownies or your donuts or whatever if it's just, like, horrible, like the, the ceiling is leaking and the floor is all cracked and there's a toilet in the middle of the freaking uh, bakery section, you know, like no one's gonna eat there, okay? So, interior design, baking itself, business, uh, location, everybody will always say location, 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 where is the bakery gonna be placed? Um, the staff, you gotta have a staff, how well are you gonna treat your staff? You know, this stuff really comes to the head if you wanna make the greatest bakery that was ever known, okay? So we're gonna go through all of that today, the ranks on the tier list from best to worst we have the very best triple exclamation mark okay um i am going to try to put only one maybe two but i'm thinking just one character on that spot because the very best means you are the very best you are at the very top of the pyramid no one else can stand with you okay you have the greatest bakery ever all right that's why it's in all capital letters and three exclamation marks okay in descending order of exclamation marks we have the best, which, you know, like, that's the way you might, you know, say it to a friend, you know, which is like, oh, let's go to this bakery. Oh, I love them. They're the best, okay? Not the very best, not the greatest that ever was, but the best, okay? They're in the category of the best, all right? After that, we have amazing. Oh, I would love to go there. It's amazing. I love their cupcakes. I, they make so many good uh, uh, cinnamon rolls. I have a giant list in front of me of a bunch of different pastries and baked goods, so don't worry. Uh, it's like, oh my god, their lemon bars are incredible. They're amazing. I want to go there, okay? And they only have one exclamation point, okay? So you got to keep track of that, all right? So then we have really good, and uh, it's still really good. You know, it's not bad. It's really good, but it's nothing you're going to, like, raise your voice over. It's not going to be like, hey, let's go to that bakery and uh, uh, get some uh, get some strudel. <laughs> Just be like, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, I like them. They're really good. You know, that's that's basically like you'd recommend it to a friend. Oh yeah, if you want you want a bakery that's like really good, head down on uh, Fifth Street or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, uh, kudos to anybody out there that lives on a Fifth Street and actually has a bakery on that street. You should just go get some cookies just because I brought that up. Um, then we have uh, good, just good. You know, they're good. Um, you would still recommend them. You would still eat there. Um, but it's nothing to write home about. It's like strictly average, like right in the middle kind of situation, okay? Uh, then we have... Eh. 
And this is probably the point where you would not recommend it to a friend. Um, if a friend asked you, like, hey, is that bakery down the street there, is that any good? And you don't respond with any level of, you don't respond with any level of disgust, or but you also don't respond with any level of happiness or joy. It's just, eh. I mean, like, it's it's a bakery. It's there. Eh, you know? Uh, maybe some of the stuff you get is like, hey, I, I got, like, you know, some cookies there once. They were kind of stale, you know? The bread there is, like, all right if you get it early. Like, if you get there early, right when they make the bread, it's really good. But you, later in the day, it's kind of stale. It's just kind of just – it's still edible. It's just – Eh. You know, like, okay. Then we have garbage. This is like, okay, you would actively tell someone to avoid this establishment, to avoid this bakery. Be like, I want to go eat at that bakery. No, no, do not eat at that bakery. Do not go there. You will get sick. They make, uh, they barely pass their health inspection. In fact, I think they failed it last time. You know, it's just like, it's not good. Um, it's disgusting. You do not want to eat there. All right. Absolutely not. You know, I would never eat there. It's the kind of place you eat there once you eat there once because maybe and then it's like you get horribly sick and it's like never again all right that's the place and you lodge a complaint against it okay so that's garbage tier and then finally we have the lowest tier and i looked so hard i pulled up thesaurus.com so i could get an appropriate synonym for horrible that would appropriately encapsulate this tier all right we had abhorrent uh, we had appalling, we had awful, disgusting, dreadful, frightful, ghastly, you know, gruesome, you know, horrid, you know, all these words to describe this. But I went with unholy because <laughs> I felt like this is the worst bakery. You don't even deserve the right to call it a bakery at that point. All right. What you are bringing is not like happy pastries that make people smile. No, you are actively making the world worse by having this establishment be called a bakery. All right. So, um, yeah, that's the lowest one, <laughs> all right? So that's fair. Let's just get to it. I know that was a long intro, but by the nature of this video, it pretty much had to be, all right? All the rules are laid down on the table. Let's get into this. I think this is all alphabetical order. So Arlong, Bartholomew, Kuma, Bartolomeo. Yeah, it's all alphabetical order. And very appropriate that the first character up is Arlong, the main villain of the East Blue Saga. Uh, because I think Arlong was one of the first characters I started the bakery running gag with. Like, where's Arlong at right now? You know, did he escape? Is he in prison? We didn't see him at Impel Down, so maybe he's out there somewhere starting a bakery, all right? So first and foremost, uh, yeah, Arlong is not going to be on the top three, probably not even in the top four, so let's just get that out of the way right now. He's definitely not known for his baking prowess, okay? Arlong's whole deal is he hates humanity. So unless he has a job that involves him going out and, like, slaughtering humans, he's not going to be happy with his life. You know what I mean? So I, I don't think it would be the worst ever. It would just be a job that he absolutely despises. Okay? So I'm thinking, honestly, putting him in eh... Because, like, it would just be like, I think he could do it, but it would just be like, he wouldn't be happy there in the slightest. Um, oh! Alright, well, actually, the idea is maybe he wants to make human life miserable, so what if he, like, made baked goods with the express purpose of making humans sick, and so he opened the bakery with that in mind, and so humans would come in and, like, eat the baked goods, and then they would get sick. But if they did that, remember, starting a bakery, if he did that, then everybody would know that the bakery is, like, horrible and makes you sick, so no one would eat there anymore, and it would probably get closed down, honestly, right? I think Ant eh is a good place for Arlong, because that's the thing. He would make baked goods that are not to the point where they would make you actively sick, like they would not give you food poisoning or whatever, but it would be like one step above that. It would be like, he would be making stale bread, uh, he would treat his employees like crap. He would treat the customers like crap. It might be sort of like one of those insult restaurants. You know what I mean? Like the insult restaurant where I've never been to one, but you walk in and just like, Hi, I'd like a table for two, please. Oh, a table for two, Mr. Fancy Pants. Except Arlong would be a lot more like he would like curse in your face. Like, screw you! You know, just like, just sit down! You'll get what I give you, you know? It's just like, I would like to order a cake. We're out of cake, you know? I'll give you, here, here's a cupcake I made three days ago that fell on the floor. This is all you get. 
<laughs> you know, like, and so maybe it wouldn't make you sick, but it would just be like, oh, God, I'm not eating here again, right? Okay. So, yeah, I think eh would probably be the best Arlong could really hope for. I think that would be the point. And he would just hate his job every single day. He would go in, and he would just put on the apron, and he would start at the oven. It would be, where would it be located? I don't know. I feel like he would try to make it somewhere. Like, uh, it would be, okay, it would try to look like Arlong Park, which was modeled after Saba Odi Park, but he would not be able to get enough bank loans. You know, imagine Arlong going to try to get a loan out at the bank or whatever. It just wouldn't happen, right? He would he would get upset at some point, you know? Some tables would be flipped. Some people would probably end up dead at the end of the day. So uh, he would not get enough money to make a proper bakery the way that he envisioned it, like the Arlong Park. So um, they would try their best, but it would look like a really crappy version of Arlong Park. Like, with like $30 of paint and some cardboard and staples and that's like the best they have to try to make a bakery that looks like Arlong Park and it's just they would paint it bright enough colors to make it look interesting from the street but then you'd walk in and it would just be like oh god this is awful but alright I guess we're in here I guess it looks operationally like a bakery so okay but it wouldn't be much beyond that so uh, then we have Kuma now I'm going to I'm going to use Kuma as he currently exists in the story which he's a robot. He's a pacifista. He's a, you know, PX0. Um and I got to be honest with you though, like even if he's a battle robot, he's also a robot that works as the servant for the celestial dragon. So I imagine he has like other stuff in his coding that isn't just like battle, okay? So like in a really messed up way because of his like uh, modifications becoming a pacifista taking away his humanity I mean like he's a robot he would probably be a really decent baker like honestly right like you know he would bake everything the perfect amount of time he would have robot senses to keep track if something is burning like he would never you ever been cooking something and you set the timer or maybe you set it wrong or you forget to set it I've done that before and you go away and you're like what's burning oh shit my spinach puffs you know you go back to the oven it's like ah crap 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 that would never happen with Kuma you know Kuma would be like you know analyzing recipe beep 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 boop beep stirring eggs Fla folding in flour, baking, you know, for exactly 14 minutes, you know, and he would, like, have a sensor to indicate, like, right when the cookies were, like, the perfect level of crispy gold, that'd be perfect, right? Okay, and he would take it out, and he would just be like, I have baked cookies, cookie parameter complete here, you know, like, that would be Kuma. Now, as a downside of that, he would lack any sort of originality or creativity, okay, because he's a robot. So, as he is right now, anyway, he sort of lacks the capability for that. He would never be able to come up with, like, I have interesting new idea, place whipped cream on the brownies. But, you know, like, he wouldn't be able to do that. He would just be able to follow rote recipes perfectly, all right? So, I would put Kuma in the really good category, maybe amazing category, yeah, I'll put him in amazing, because just give him a stack of recipes. Like, I have this giant book of pie back behind me right here. Just give him this giant book of pie. Kuma would be able to make every single pie in this book perfectly as the recipe dictates, okay? Um, maybe he's even the best. I don't know. I don't know, because the lack of creativity is certainly a hit against him, but there's so many good recipes out there that he could follow perfectly, and he would just nail every single time, right? Um, so, yeah. Um, I, I would say, well, no, this isn't just judging the bakery skill, though. Uh, this is judging everything involving the bakery, not just the baking skill, okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop it back down to amazing, okay? Because, you know, everything else, like, the environment would be very, uh, very sterile. It would be just a very minimalistic bakery. You walk in, there are chairs, there are tables, there's an area where you can order, and there's some trash cans, and that's it. It's, it's a very sterile, very just bland sort of environment, because he does not have the capabilities to... Uh, maybe he should be really good, I don't know. Damn it, this is hard. This is harder than I thought, but I knew that. I knew that from the offset this is going to be a difficult video. Really good. I'm keeping him as really good, okay? The baked goods themselves would be incredible, but everything else would sort of just be average, okay? So I'm just going to keep with really good, all right? Bartolomeo's next. Okay, so we can all agree it's going to be a straw hat-themed bakery, right? That's exactly what he would do. 
I don't know if he would get in trouble with some copyright situations with that. Um, you know, he would go in to get the, the loan for the small business and he would just be like, hey, I want to make a bakery after my hero, Monkey D. Luffy. So, you know, the way he would spin it, maybe the loan officer would just be like, you know what? That's a really inspiring story. It's somebody that you look up to and you want to make a bakery in honor of them. You know, you know, shut up and take our money kind of thing. So I think he could get a pretty decent loan for it. Um, you know, if he just hammed it up a lot, uh, you know, and then he could have basically a, a version of the going Luffy Senpai, which is the Barto Club's boat. Just picture it in bakery form, okay? And everything would be straw hat themed. This would actually be a place I would like to go eat at because, like, the pie would be in the shape of a straw hat. No, the cookies would be in shape of a straw hat. That would be easy relatively to make. Um, but then you'll also get cookies that have, like, different straw hats on them. Like, Choppers has, like, pink icing for his hats. Um, um, you could get, like, maybe, like, the Super Frankie special, which is, like, a giant, maybe, like, Sunday. Do wait, 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 ice cream. Are we dealing with ice cream now because we're in a bakery? I don't know. Let's let's stay away. Maybe ice cream cake. We could do ice cream cake. So it's like, yeah, it's the ice cream cake, the super, 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 super Frankie birthday deluxe firework America cake or whatever, right? It's like a it's like a quadruple decker ice cream cake covered in red, white, and blue sprinkles that has sparklers on it that you would get for like your kid's birthday party or something, right? So that's the kind of stuff that would be on sale at the Barto Club, uh, the Barto Club's bakery. Uh, you walk in and they give you like straw hat little like you know like I don't know bibs or something or hats or you know that that would actually be a really fun place to work I think it would just be a one piece themed cafe is all it would be so therefore I honestly think I'm gonna put him up here as the well no okay wait a second let's let's stop for a moment here okay let's stop for a moment it's the exact opposite of Kumo we're dealing with here where the environment would be very expressive it would be very interesting especially if you're a one piece fan okay but how good would the actual baked goods be remember bartolomeo went out to sea with really little information and knowledge about the grand line they were taking advice from their grandma basically back at Logtown. all right you got to imagine they would basically be doing the same thing here they would be like oh no i, I burned the cookies well let's call grandma all right grandma i burned the cookies i'm like oh well dear you gotta add enough flour remember i'm like oh i'm sorry grandma and remember the baking powder dear i'm like okay you know so you know like the Barto Club themselves running a bakery that might be a little rough they're gonna try their best I think they would have a really good start and like the one piece sort of aesthetic might just draw people from that alone but I don't think it would be the greatest ever I'm gonna put Bartolomeo in amazing though uh because I have hope I have hope that they could learn it. If it's something relating to the Straw Hats, I think they would really dedicate themselves to it. So Bartolomeo would spend every single day of his off time learning how to make the best Straw Hat shaped cookies ever. So, you know, aesthetic wise, it would be great. I think the actual product at the beginning would be a little shaky, but they would get better over time if they could just get over that hurdle. I think they could really have an amazing bakery here, okay? All right. Next up, we have Hawkins. So Hawkins relies a lot on his tarot, okay? That's his thing. That's his. That's what he does, right? So he would always pull out his tarot cards for everything. He would just be like, where is the best location to put this bakery? Hmm, 20% over there by the park. 45% over there by the business district. Hmm. So he honestly has a cheat code here, if we're being honest, because in a business setting, like it, it's hard enough being a pirate and having these kind of abilities because he like he knows like stuff going on. Actually, it's very beneficial because he knew like the percentage of him being able to defeat Kizaru and he couldn't. So he knows this kind of stuff. Right. And I guess his fortune telling could fail him every now and then. But for the most part, it seems to be really spot on. Um, so I would say for the most part, he would be OK with it. So he would have the perfect location. Uh, he would know the exact perfect way to decorate it. Everything would be determined by divination, by clairvoyance, to be basically to kind of predict the future, right? So he'd be like, what kind of uh, baked goods should we make? Brownies? Hmm, 15%. Donuts? Hmm, 27%. 
Cream puffs, 70%. I don't know if the percentage has worked out there, but whatever. This will be a cream puff bakery. And then MASH just shows up and just that he's the one that basically <laughs> supports them every single day. Uh, but no, yeah, so that's what he would do. So honestly, like, if the, if, I mean, if his crew all work together, I guess he would be decent. He is a pirate captain after all. He has a crew that follows him. So I, I guess he would be all right to the staff. Um, the aesthetic, everything would be, actually, I would imagine everything would look like a fortune telling parlor. Like, you would walk in, like, Mystic Bakery or whatever like that, or, like, like Magic Bakery. You walk in, and it's, like, you know, tapestries, and, like, you know, there's paintings of, like, the tarot cards on the wall, and it's very dimly lit. Maybe, like, purple, like, mood lighting in there, like, they get those, um, you know, smart bulbs or whatever. Hold on a second. There we go, right here, exactly like this, essentially, okay? Every table would be circular, and it would have, like, a, a crystal ball in the center, and it would have, like, maybe, like, a little flame in there, like a centerpiece. It would, if they could get the money together, which I don't think would be a problem for Hawkins, um, I think it would be kind of on the same level as Bartolomeo here. Maybe even a little bit better, but I'm hesitant just because everything is decided by tarot, but they would still have to be the ones that would have to bake them, okay? Like the tarot cards are not going to bake the actual cookies or the cakes or the pies or whatever, right? So what, basically what they would do is he would predict, like, what baked good am I the best at making? And it would say, like, you know, cream puffs would be the best that you could possibly do. So they would just spend all their time making cream puffs. Oh, but that brings up an interesting point. Variety. I didn't even think about that. So if they just spend all their time making the one thing, it might become more of like a specialty bakery. Like, you know, this is the best bakery to get cream puffs, but that's like all they make. They don't really make anything else. Or if they do make something else, like you can ask them, but it's not that great. So I think like from a niche perspective and a, like the actual aesthetic of the bakery, I think that would all be really good. And that's exactly, I think, where I'm going to put Hawkins. I think I'm going to put him down really good because he's dedicated too much to the tarot. And, um, you know, he might not try to, like, kind of like Kuma. That actually fits where he wouldn't really try to diversify too much. It would just be what the tarot cards always tell him to do. He would never take a risk, you know what I mean, and try some new item on the menu or something like that, right? Exactly. Okay. Uh, next up is Boa. So I actually thought about Boa a little bit, and um, I was thinking, honestly a wedding style bakery, a bakery that would be more high class for Boa, something, not the kind of thing you would just walk into in the morning to get like some coffee and a donut, you know, not something like that on your way to, on your morning commute to work. No, this would be wedding cakes. This would be very professionally done, uh, you know, high class business dinners or meetings. Uh, if you really want to impress somebody, you know, something like that, that would be where Boa would work, I think. And I think she would be really good at it because because in her mind, she wants to marry Luffy. So she would just do this whole thing of baking and stuff, learning how to make a bakery and have the best bakery out there and everything for the sake of like, Luffy, I will make the greatest wedding cake ever when we get married. It's kind of sad because the whole time she would be running this bakery and just be like, yeah, I'm making these wedding cakes for all these happy couples. Pretty soon me and Luffy will be a happy couple. And then like Boa Marigold and Sander Zonia would be working there with her and all the Kuja would be there, and they, they would obviously be like, yes, Empress, absolutely, of course. And then Luffy is just, he walks in one day, it's like, Luffy, look at all these lovely cakes, and he's like, yeah, that's cool, I want a cupcake. All right, thanks, and he just leaves. He's like, ah! You know, just like, you know, a cupcake, perfect, I'll make the greatest wedding cupcakes ever, you know, so... Kind of sad, but also would be a pretty decent bakery, I think. It's just, it would just be more high class, all right? It would not be just for the, the common person just to walk in on the streets and buy, like, a $1 cupcake or something. It would be, everything would be very expensive. Everything would be the best ingredients, very top shelf kind of situation, all right? Um, the interior design would be great. Um, let's see, what else? Location, I think, would be good. Um, the staff would all just be the members of the Kuja, so that's a thing, and I think that would be fine there. Um, and I think Boa, Boa does have a personality where she, like, kicked puppies and, like, baby seals, but if it's all for Luffy, she's, like, really happy and just, like, you know, very amenable to, like, everything, okay? So, as long as it's all for Luffy, of course. So... 
The only real issue being, like, you know, the situation with, like, the price, and not a lot of people would be going in there a lot, but it would still get a lot of business. You know, people would go, like, this is the best place to get wedding cakes and stuff. So, honestly, I kind of want to put Boa at the best, okay? Because she would just focus on the wedding cake thing, and then she would be amazing at that, right? Okay, so I'm going to focus on that. I'm going to go with the best. Okay, so next up, we have Kizaru. We have Borsalino. Um, hmm, all right. So Kizaru, he's very unpredictable. He's also kind of a lazy individual. He's just like, I guess I'll open a bakery. Hmm. It would take him a long time to do it, though. It would take him a long time to get around to going to get the loan, to opening up the bakery, to like, you know, Mr. Kizaru, you need to plan like what it's going to look like on the inside and stuff. And he's like, okay. Hmm, I'll get back to you. It would just take a really long time. It would be like one of those businesses that has a sign out front that's like, coming soon, but it takes like two years to finally open. It would be something like that. But when it finally does open... Uh, I'm kind of just, I'm kind of just deciding on eh here. I mean, you could do something with his devil fruit ability, like light speed baking or something like that. But uh, would it really be useful? Like, he could travel really fast, um, but would that really help with the baking? Because a lot of times baking, you gotta, like, be watchful, and you can't just, like, speed up the process too much, or else you might mess up the final product or whatever, okay? So I guess he could, uh, they, would, they would save a lot of money on, like, the electric bill, because couldn't he just use the power to, like, light the place or just turn his light into electricity and just power the place? I mean, he has the power to fire lasers from his fingertips. I'm pretty sure he could just power a generator on his own. So they would save a lot of money in terms of, like, utilities from that perspective. Um... Yeah, I don't know about Kizaru. I, I don't really think he has the drive to. Uh, Arlong would hate it. Kizaru would just be eh with it. Like, that is Kizaru. That is his personality. Is just kind of eh, you know? Oh, I, th I think I forgot to put Aokiji on this. <laughs> I think Aokiji would also go there as well, though. Um, yeah, Aokiji's not on here. Sorry, everybody. Anybody that's a fan of Aokiji. But Aokiji would probably be put in the same, you know, position of, uh, of Kizaru. Just be eh. Um, yeah, all right. Moving on to Brook, uh, the first straw hat on the list. Okay, so we have a little bit of conflict here because number one, Brook really likes tea. So part of me thinks like it would be a very calming kind of place to eat where you would hang out with your tea and just... Ah, and then it'd be like classical music playing, you know, maybe, you know, Brooke would be playing it or he would get like a little band. It would be like a coffee shop kind of aesthetic. Maybe there would be a band in the corner, maybe a little bit more high class than that. Uh, but then part of me also thinks he's a rock star. He's the soul king for God's sake. So this would be like a punk rock, like heavy metal sort of cafe. And considering we have Eustace Kid on here, I'm going to save that aesthetic for him. I'm going to go with more of, like, the Victorian England, you know, fancy kind of cafe to have a cup of tea and have some, uh, some crumpets or, uh, biscuits or whatever they're called in England. Um, and you have some Earl Grey tea. There'd be a lot of selections of tea along with all the pastries to go with them. Brooke would know very well what to complement what with what. Like, if you got this specific kind of, like, I would like the Earl Grey tea, please. And Brooke would be like, yo ho 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 may I offer this pastry to go with your tea? It's very delicious, you know? I think that would work. It would be very peaceful, very calming in there. Brooke might even bust out. He would be a favorite to the locals. Everybody would love Brooke. He would bust out the violin every now and then and just play the song, and his devil fruit power would help everybody relax. It would be a very relaxing place to go. Very chill. Like, it doesn't matter how stressed out you are. Whenever you go into Brooks Cafe and sit down, just have some tea or some coffee, have a donut or whatever, have a pastry. You walk out, you just feel refreshed. You know what I mean? So I think for that, I would put as um, a really good, yeah, just a really good place. Like, I don't think he would, be, he would make any specific pastry that would like be blown out of the water amazing delicious but it would be really solid i think brooke could definitely open a really solid bakery out of all of the straw hats i think he would be one that would be able to be more financially responsible and also mix a decent amount of style in that too you know what i mean okay so next up we have buggy <laughs> okay so the very best moving on to caesar okay no so buggy 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 okay buggy and caesar are right next to each other that's perfect okay so 
Mm. So I'm thinking county fair kind of vibes here, right? I'm thinking like going to the county fair and getting like a deep fried Twinkie. Uh, my favorite would be like a deep fried Oreo. You know, there's uh, it's comfort food. It's really bad for you. It's all like fried, like circus carnival food. Um, but there's charm to that too. Like I look forward to the county fair every year because I know like I'm, I'm going to eat absolute garbage, not garbage. Then in fact, it doesn't taste good, but like it's bad for me, but it's like the only time of the year where the fair comes to town. So I like, all right, I don't eat deep fried Oreos any other time of the year. I only eat them the first week of September when the county fair comes to town. I have a few of them and I'm good. And they are the most amazing thing ever, okay? So that's the kind of aesthetic. Buggy would make a bakery that would basically be like the county fair year round. Okay, so you would go in, they would have the deep fryers, they would have a funnel cake station, they would have, you know, um, all like a caramel candy apple station, all of the food that you get, like monkey bread, if you've ever had, if you've never had monkey bread, it's insanely good, it's incredible, that kind of stuff. They would have, I just had these the other day when I went to a baseball game, they had um, like almonds and pecans, but they were dusted with like cinnamon sugar and like fried or cooked, I'm like, not fried, but they were like roasted, roasted pecans with like cinnamon sugar, they were so delicious, okay? So that would be the aesthetic of Buggy's Bakery, okay? And you could just call it that because of the alliteration, Buggy's Bakery, okay? I'm actually going to put this as amazing for right now. Let's see if we move it up or down here, just because th I think the food, that, that kind of food is really easy to make, okay? And it's fast, too, which is why they set up shop in the kiosks and the little, you know, vans and everything at the fair, because it's like, hey, I would like an Oreo, a deep-fried Oreo, please, and be like, okay, they take Oreo, dip it in the batter, in the fryer, comes out, dust it with powdered sugar, here you go. I mean, it's it's quick. It might take a while because there's a line, but in Buggy's Bakery, maybe they would have enough staff to, like, keep up with it. It would be like the fair came to town. Everybody would be lining up. Everybody would be like, you know, you know, Twinkies and everything. But I think it would drop out, uh, drop off after the first few uh, days because you're not going to eat there all the time. You would have a few regulars that eat there every single day, but they probably wouldn't for very long if you catch my drift, okay? Because this place would be a heart attack waiting to happen, all right? Like, if you ate there every day, your cholesterol would just be, like, all of it. You go, I, hey, doc, I need, to, I need you to test my cholesterol. It just, the machine just says all of it. All of the cholesterol, you know what I mean? Like, so you would not eat there very often. But it would be a place you go to celebrate, okay? So if you were having a birthday or a special event, uh, it would sort of be like uh, Boa Hancock's Wedding Bakery, except this one would be a lot more cheap. It would be for the common folk, you know what I mean? Just to come in there like, hey, Billy, it's your seventh birthday. Let's take you to Buggy's Bakery and get you a deep-fried cake or whatever. Like It's like, okay, Dad, yay! Deep-fried chocolate cake. There you are, son. You know, like, it would be something like that. It would be special events, that kind of stuff would not be healthy in the slightest for you. Should I deduct points just because it would be a heart attack waiting to happen? I kind of feel like it. Like this is the epitome of like really, really bad comfort food, but amazingly good, okay? Oh, man. Buggy might be like the first good, all right? Because it's like... That's what I mean. Like, I look forward to the fair every year. I love those Oreos, but it's like... Every, like, knowing I could go and get them anytime I want down the street at the bakery, I could just walk in and just be like, five deep fried Oreos, please, and be like, just like that for an affordable price. That's tempting, you know what I mean? That's just temptation, and that's like, I think a lot more people, wherever this bakery opened, they'd be gaining a lot of weight in the process, right? I mean, I think that's how that would go. So, I'm gonna go with good... I'll go with really good. I'm going to go with really good for Buggy, okay? But, yeah, that's... Mm, I have to, but there's just so many reasons why. If it was just based on the food alone, he might be the best, but he has to lose a few points just because of everything else. The aesthetic would be great. It would just be walking into the fair, basically, yeah. So, that's, that's Buggy. Now, Caesar, on the other hand. Caesar Clown is a different kind of clown, all right, than Buggy is. Caesar. Oh, and by the way, Buggy, this would be genuinely, I, I'm not like the other times I'm saying it with the other characters, it's just funny or for a gag. This might actually be Buggy's calling. I'm just saying, like, this would be the job I think he would be very, very good at 
and that he could stick to and be very successful. Okay, I'm just saying that. Caesar Clown, on the other hand, I think is going to be the first person to land the unholy category. Because this is a guy that literally makes gas weapons to be sold for mass slaughter of entire populations, okay? Like, he would literally make a donut that would kill you. Just because that's how he gets his kicks. He would be like, I will make the bakery better than Vegapunk would. He would make a poison donut, alright? He would make the forbidden donut, basically, he would. Um, anything you could eat there, it would probably kill you. Not probably. Anything you eat there would kill you. And it would kill you slowly. Not as slowly as buggies would, but it would, you know what I mean? Like, it would kill you. Like, it would just, it wouldn't be good. You'd order, like, you'd go in, and you'd be like, it would be very creepy. It would be mood lighting like this. It would be purple lighting, but it would be like a mad scientist lab. Like, you'd walk in, and it would just be, like... Very creepy steel walls, steel floor, uh, buzzing. You know what? It wouldn't be purple lighting. It would be buzzing fluorescent lighting, like 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 a like a doctor's office, like a surgery room or something. You would walk in, and it would just be one of the lights goes out. You'd be like, um, yes, um, are are you open? It's like, ah, yes. Welcome to Caesar's Bakery. <laughs> May I interest you in our lemon squares this evening? And he's like, oh, I'm just, I'm going home, and uh, my wife asked me to pick up dessert. Um, yeah, lemon squares sound good. Uh, how much are they? <laughs> oh, for you, they're free. <laughs> You're just my little test subject. I mean, customer. Here you go. And then he would just disappear into the back room, and you would just be like, all right. And then the lemon squares, they look perfectly fine. I roll perception. They look fine to you. They look like they look like lemon squares. They're dusted with some type of white powder you assume is powdered sugar. It looks like lemon squares. They smell like lemon squares. I guess I'll take them then and then you go home. You'll see what happens, I guess. It's like, maybe you'll die, maybe you won't. Maybe they are actually lemon squares. They taste like lemon. I don't know if it's like lemon actual extract in this or lemon pledge. I don't know, but I'm definitely getting the feeling of lemon here. Mm, you know, so yeah, yeah, that would be that, you know? Uh, yeah, just on the off chance, just on the, no, no, not on the off chance, just on the pretty solid chance that you would die. Yeah, it's going in the unholy category, okay. Uh, next up is Beiji. I, I think Beiji would make a really solid bakery. He's all about being a mafia boss. Uh, so it would probably be a front for the mafia. Let's, like, be straight up about that. There would be, like, a basement or, like, a back room to Beiji's Bakery where there'd be, like, illegal card games going on and stuff like that. You know, like, you go in and you order, I would like a strawberry tart, please. Ah, okay. Would you like that tart with, uh, two or three strawberries? I'd like it with three. All right. And then they open the trap door and you go down and it's like the illegal card game going on downstairs or something like mafia related. Somebody's tied to a chair getting their fingers chopped off in the corner, you know. It would be a situation like that. But does that really affect like the customer base? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like as long as you, you know, you don't know it's a front for the mafia. It's like legitimate businessmen's social club like from the Simpsons or whatever. Like it's totally legitimate bakery. Come on in, have yourself some pretzels, you know, or whatever, right? And so they would have a staff. It would be, like, perfect up front. Like, you know, you'd walk in. It would be, like, Italian-themed because beige you know. It'd be, like, an Italian-themed bakery. You walk in. The wallpaper's nice. It's not, like, crazy good, but it's, like, you know, welcoming enough. You go in. You, you get your order or whatever, and you leave. And it's just some, like, shady business operations might be going on. You know, it might be a front to, like, launder money or something, right? So, yeah, but I don't think it would be bad. I think, you know what? I think Beiji deserves the good spot. I think 
he would make it would be very clean uh, because he's kind of like OCD with that. He would make sure everything is clean up front. And, you know, if like the Marines or like the authorities or anybody showed up, he would be like, make sure that the front of the shop is like perfect. And so everything looks legit and everything like that, because it is. And uh, yeah, that would be Beijing's Bakery. I think I think he would do a good job. All right. Uh, next up is Cavendish. All right. So I was thinking about Cavendish here. All right. So Cavendish, mm, given his reputation in the bourgeois kingdom, he literally had to leave the kingdom because he was just so attractive. Everybody wanted to date him, okay? Uh, I, I imagine a lot of women would flock to his bakery or whatever business he decided to open, right? So if he opened up, like, it's just, it's this giant, very ostentatious sort of, like, uh, sign that's just, like, Cavendish's beautiful bakery. And there's, like, flowers and sparkles everywhere. And he's there, but he doesn't cook. He doesn't cook or bake. He doesn't, he's not the cashier or anything. He's just there walking around he would be the waiter but it would be because of his desire to be a waiter he would basically just be like everybody else do all of the menial work and I'll be the one to deliver the tart to the table and so he takes the beautiful tart and it is immaculate because he would make sure it's immaculate because it's the beautiful bakery anything that doesn't meet the standards he would be sort of a dick to the staff I think he would be a major asshole to the staff if they messed up something like that creme brulee is slightly burned and he would like toss it aside in the trash and he'd be like you're fired you know he would be that kind of he would be that kind of boss so he'd kind of be an asshole in that respect but he would be the kind of guy that takes the creme brulee and takes it to the table and all the ladies are at the table and be like, oh my God, it's Cavendish. He's like, here you are, ladies. And be like, oh my God, he spoke to me. You know, it'd be like that kind of stuff. And that's Cavendish's thing, right? So in that regard, I, I would put amazing for Cavendish. Uh, he would lose some points there because of the way he treats his staff. But like the uh, the storefront might be a little much, but it would it would be clean. It would be very nice to walk in and everything like that. And it would have a lot of customers coming to that um but but he also has a split personality that's a serial killer so i'm thinking that's gonna drop some points um <laughs> i'm thinking that's gonna drop some tears there huh all right so it's like during the day it's the best one of the best bakeries around town but uh if you're walking around that area at night Hakuba is going to come out and just, you know, slit your throat. And, um, yeah, it's not going to be, you're going to be found in like the dumpster next to the bakery, like the following day. So yeah, I don't even like, I don't even know how long it would be open if the authorities can trace it back to like the Marines are like looking around and they're just like, wait a second here. New bakery opens up at the same time. All these serial killings occur around this bakery. Hmm, I feel like it wouldn't last very long. I feel like Hakuba would ruin it. But it's also a really good bakery during the day. <laughs> you know what I mean? I should have had Hakuba on here as like a separate, as a separate thing. Okay, but no, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. I want to ask you guys this. I want to ask you guys this. I'm taking off this, this hat because it's very annoying. It keeps falling down, okay? But I want to ask you guys this, all right? So... It's like one of the best bakeries around town that serves amazing food. But it's in an area of town where a serial killer is known to be very active. But only at night. But only at night. That's the thing. The bakery is closed at night. They close at like 7 o'clock. All right? They close at 7, maybe even earlier than that. It's one of those places that closes at like 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Fine. Actually, maybe maybe Cavendish, because Cavendish doesn't like Hakuba. Cavendish doesn't like it when Hakuba goes around and slaughters people, right? So Cavendish would make damn sure that it would not be open even close to dusk, okay? So it would be open. He would probably open it from like 11 a.m., to like 6 p.m. at the latest, okay? And that would be during the summer. You know, when it starts getting dark out later, he would probably, because he goes to bed, he gets tired, all right? So it's like, okay. But then he, again, he also has narcolepsy. Shit. He also just falls asleep at random points, so that could also be a problem. Oh, man, that's not good. <laughs> oh, this is, this, is, this is difficult here. Okay. All right. I'm going to put Hakuba's antics separate from the actual bakery. Okay, because the baking would be good. 
the business end of it would be all right. Um, the staff, he would mistreat the staff a little bit. He would. I don't think he would mistreat them completely. I don't think he would beat them or anything. He would just be a real big asshole to them, really. Um, you know, if they didn't do perfect, then he would he would you know chew them out. Um, you know, but interior design would be very frilly and everything like that. I'm gonna just say Hakaba's antics are secondary they're auxiliary to everything that's going on here as long as you stay away from the bakery at night for the most part you'll be fine <laughs> you should be cavendish has a little bit better control over hakaba anyway now sort of like half and half eh, all right i'll put him down as 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 really good I'll, I'll drop him to good all right just because of the possibility you might be murdered I'll put him in the good category, all right? But it's like everything else pretty solid. Okay. Who's next? Big Mom. Okay. Now, here's the kicker with Big Mom, all right? Here's the thing. You would expect to be a really good... Because basically, Totland is sort of the example of that already. And there is some really, really good food in Totland, all right? But if Big Mom opened her own bakery, it would be huge, by the way. Like, it would be it would be like a 10-story building in the middle of, like, New York City or L.A. That would be like Big Mom's Baking Company or something like that, right? It would be, it would be huge, okay? And every floor would be dedicated, like, you know, she has enough money. She's a Yonko. So I imagine if the Yonkos wanted to, like, cash in their treasure and go open up a bakery... I mean, it would be, you know, they would have enough money to do whatever they wanted, essentially. So she could make her own corporation, essentially. So, you know, there's all that, and she would be, like, the CEO of the corporation. She would treat her employees like crap, just like she treats her own children like crap. So that's a problem. Uh, she would just be this high-powered CEO. Like, you ever watch The Devil Wears Prada? That's a weird reference to bring up. I've never even seen it, but I saw the trailer, so I got the gist of it. I got the gist of it, you know? Um, Cruella. Have you ever seen Cruella? The really snobby sort of like high powered um you know fashion designer in that movie kind of giving me big mom vibes in this sort of business world kind of area okay but with that, with all that being said though um she would churn out pretty good product. It would be pretty decent in terms of like, it would be like a mass production kind of corporation bakery, okay? So it would be like, you know, going to the store and buying a pack of Oreos or Twinkies or, you know, fudge rounds or something like that. Instead of Little Debbie's, you got Big Moms! So I'm debating whether to put her in, go I don't think she deserves to be in garbage tier. Because it would be edible food. It would be like going to the store and buying a Little Debbie snack or whatever, okay? Just on that scale. I'll put her in, um... Okay, I'll put her in eh. I'll put her in eh. And the reason is this. If she was decent to her employees, like if she was okay with her employees and everything like that, I would say good. Or maybe really good. Um, okay? But she would treat them horribly, and it would be a very business, sort of like off an assembly line sort of situation. So I think that drops her down to eh, okay? Uh, that would be the situation there. I mean, she would be okay in terms of profit. They, they would be making money. It's just in general, it would just be like, you know, Big Mom's a horrible CEO of this corporation kind of situation, right? Uh, Crocodile would be next. Crocodile. I feel like Crocodile this entire time would be kind of like Beji. He would be using it as a front to, like, have, like, a, a mercenary group assemble in, like, the basement or something. You know what I mean? But once again, he, he would be like, like I said before, he's like a Bond villain. Just imagine a Bond villain that opens a bakery. I haven't read all the James Bond novels. I don't even really know any of the movies. I saw a little bit of uh, Casino Royale and didn't really like it. Maybe there's a Bond villain somewhere that opened up a bakery. I don't know. That's the analog to this. Um, but it would be very clean, it would be very professional on the surface, but there would be some shady business deals going on right, right under it, right? Um, because Crocodile is intelligent, that's how he does things. Like, like, Arlong is where he is, because I don't think Arlong is, like, smart enough to really do something like that behind the scenes, like Beji or Crocodile would be able to. So, I would put Crocodile in that same position as Beji, then. Like, those two, I think, have a very similar kind of business model, right? I think it would go like that.
And when it comes to, like, the desert theme, because he has the sand fruit, like, I don't know, like, there's sand in my muffins, you know? I don't think it would be anything like that, because Crocodile's not going to be using his devil fruit to, like, cook or bake the muffins or whatever like that, right? Um, I don't even think he would really be hanging out there for the most part. He would be, like, he would be the owner that shows up every once in a while to make sure everything is, like, on the up and up, but I don't think it would be on the level that Beiji would, okay? He would just, like, poke his head in, look around, and be like... Everybody doing all right? Okay, good. Just make sure to, you know, the, the baked goods are good. Or there's a delivery coming in uh, next Wednesday. Uh, some of it goes up here. Some of it goes downstairs. Just, you know, where to go. All right. I got to get back. You know, that would be kind of crocodile, right? Okay, that's him right there. All right. Um, let's see. Do Flamingo. Okay. So Do Flamingo is the next level of uh, Beiji and Crocodile, where he ruled over the underworld. He ruled over, like, a black market drug, like, production factory, basically, is what Do Flamingo was doing here. So, I imagine the bakery would be that as well. <laughs> the bakery would be a front for, like, drug trading, all right? Like, that's that would be what would be going on, you know? Instead of the illegal card games in Beijing and Crocodile or whatever, the mercenaries, you know, that would be the front. We're kind of going Breaking Bad a little bit into this. Kind of Breaking Bad, but with Doflamingo, essentially, right? Hey, Walt, Walter White wears glasses, and Doflamingo wears glasses. There you go, right there. It's just like, yeah, Pika, we need to cook, you know? Like, something like that, right? Okay, um, so Doflamingo's Bakery. Um, I mean, his castle, everything at Dressrosa looked really good. Also, he would have the money to do it. He would have the money to make this work. Um, he could basically set up whatever he wanted. Uh, kind of the same thing with Crocodile, really, because Crocodile likes, like, the finer things in life. So, I think that would work. Um, you know, the employees, you know, sort of like the Mafia, sort of like the Doflamingo family, um, he would treat them like family. He would be very loyal to him. Everybody there would work for Doflamingo for both the bakery end of things as well as the illegal end of things, you know? I feel like with, um, with Beiji or Crocodile, he might they might hire, like, regular citizens as, like, the front to work the cash register or whatever. But when it comes to Doflamingo, I feel like everybody in the, uh, the business would be in on it. They would all know what's really going on, and they would be producing smiles in the basement to sell on the black market or something, right? So, uh, yeah, Doflamingo's basically a drug lord, but that would be underground stuff, you know, once again. So in terms of uh, the bakery, um, just like how, like, uh, well, no, I mean, no, actually, you know what? It wouldn't be like Walter White. It would be like Gus. Yeah, Gus would be a better analog to Doflamingo here. Actually, that would be perfect. So just like Gustavo Fring from Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, which, by the way, I'm watching Better Call Saul right now. That last episode, man, holy crap, they had to leave us on that cliffhanger. I can't wait until the midseason finale next week. It's going to be, whoa, it's going to be wild. But anyway... Yeah, Gustavo Fring has Los Poyos Hermanos, and Doflamingo, and actually, you know, he has, like, the, the front of being, like, this kindly king of Dressrosa, so it fits really well. So, just like Los Poyos Hermanos is a really good chicken restaurant um, that just happens to be the cover for, like, the money, money laundering, uh, that would actually be what this would be. The bakery would be the money laundering operation for the drug, the drug uh, production. That's what it would be all about. But, yeah... Uh, so where would I put Los, Hoy Los Poyos Hermanos? I would probably put it, like, the best, because it's, like, the best chicken around. So it's either one of these. All right, all right. The bakery would go on the best, but I'll drop Doflamingo down to amazing just because of the drug stuff going on in the background, okay? <laughs> like, there you go. All right, so I'll, I'll go with that, but it would be, like, a really good place to eat, I think. I think Doflamingo would be fine with it, right? As long as there's no barbecue, he would be okay. Because he hates barbecue for what happened to him as a kid. Uh, okay, who's next? Uh, Mihawk. Dracul Mihawk. Um, let's see. It would be very gothic. Uh, very gothic sort of design. Uh, very creepy. Just imagine if a vampire opens a bakery. <laughs> But that could work, you know, because vampires are in right now. Um, you know, the last 10 years, ever since Twilight, vampires have been very prevalent in, like, the pop culture. So you get a lot of people eating there. Uh, also, you would have, like, the goth crowd and, like, the emo crowd would walk in. Maybe Mihawk could play, like, some My Chemical Romance, Panic at the Disco, early Panic at the Disco. We're talking, like, Fever-era Panic at the Disco. Uh, you know, uh... 
freaking um uh, uh all time low you know uh sunny day real estate I, I don't know you'd have all that playing in the background right and they go in and you eat and the lighting would be red instead of purple um i'm trying to think though mihawk um he knows how to cook like he knows how to cook he lives in that castle by himself he cooks everything himself um, he's very high class. He likes his wine. He likes to swirl his wine. Um, you could make wine-based desserts, like wine-based pastries and stuff. You, you can do that kind of stuff, absolutely. Um, you know, so he would have something like that, I guess, going on. Um, they, he would have a wine selection. That's what it would be. It would be sort of a high class place. But you could eat there if you don't have a lot of money. It's just they would have options if you wanted to spend some more money, right? Like if you wanted to go out to this place, the creepy vampire sort of cafe, vampire cafe, let's just call it that. And, you know, you got Yoru hanging up behind the counter. Mihawk has, he's, he's, he's given up his swordsmanship days. He's just decided, you know, hold on, let me go grab Yoru. Mihawk just gives up with the, 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 the whole swordsman, best swordsman in the world thing. Like, he just finally realizes nobody will be able to best him. Like, let's say the final battle is Mihawk versus Zoro, and Mihawk wins. And he just decides that Zoro will never be able to beat him. Shanks can't beat him. Mihawk is just objectively the best. There's no one left to challenge him. So he just hangs up Yoru behind the counter, and he has a lovely wine selection. And, uh... All of the greatest, you know, like, um, baked goods you can imagine there. There's muffins, you know, there's there's certain things I don't think he would have. I don't think he would have cupcakes. I don't think he would buy cupcakes at Mihawk's Bakery. Um, bagels, uh, I could see pie. I could see him making anything red. Anything that has cherries or strawberries in it would be there because of the vampire thing, right? Tarts, um, uh, maybe brownies, maybe brownies that have, like, ooh, red velvet chocolate brownies. Oh, that actually sounds delicious right now. Um, yeah. Yeah, danishes, like a cherry danish uh, for breakfast you would walk in. But then it would also have like a dining area for dinner where you could sit down and order maybe more of a meal, but also you have like a fancy selection of wines. It would be sort of stretching the idea of what a bakery could be, but he's Mihawk and he has a giant six-foot sword behind the counter. Are you going to argue with him? No, you're not. Uh, Perona would be working there, of course. I think Perona would be there. She would be a baker as well. But Mihawk and, oh my god, I'm picturing this scenario because a lot of people ship Mihawk and Perona. I do as well. If Mihawk and Perona get married... <laughs> <laughs> they open this bakery. <laughs> so it'd be a vampire and a ghost that have opened a bakery. The human drills are working there. <laughs> The human drills. They've they've already taught the human drills how to till the fields and farm. So now they just, you know, teach them how to properly make um red velvet cake and whatever. Like, you know. <laughs> and if and if anybody comes in to like um and, and, like, hates the service or, like, complains, Perona will just use her negative hollow to just be like, I hate this place. This is horrible. And just, you know, huddle, 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 negative hollow. And just like, it's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm, I don't know why, man. It's just like the cake was fine. You know, it's just like, you know, like, that's, yeah. So I think this, I think this could work. I've actually talked myself into this. I'm going to go with the amazing category here. I, I'm going to go with the amazing category. Um, maybe even the best, <laughs> maybe even the best category, because unlike, unlike Doflamingo, remember, if it wasn't for like the underground drug trade thing going on, drug production and drug dealing, uh, Doflamingo would be up here too. You know, maybe that actually might bo bolster it. You know, people come... Actually, <laughs> wait wait a second here. Hold on. I might change Doflamingo's position because what if somebody wants like a pot brownie or something, right? Like, Doflamingo can hook you up. I mean, if anybody could, it would be Doflamingo. And, you know, everything else would just be happening, you know, downstairs, you know? And you wouldn't see that, right? And so, overall, yeah, Doflamingo's, uh, Doflamingo's Bakery, Mihawk's Bakery, Boa's Bakery, I, they're all warlords. I guess the rule is, if you're a warlord, for the most part, um, you'll have a really good skill set in opening a bakery, yeah. Uh, Kuma's lower, Buggy is lower for different reasons, but, yeah, the warlords are really taking this. They're doing it, they're doing really well here. All right, what's next? Whitebeard! All right, Whitebeard. Edward Newgate opening a bakery. Hmm. Now, Whitebeard, much like Big Mom, would have a lot of money, a lot of treasure to work with, okay? But instead of going the more corporate, like, cold corporate route with it, like Big Mom would, I feel like Whitebeard, 
his bakery would be really big. He would have a huge building, but it wouldn't be like a corporate skyscraper or anything like that. It'd be like a three-story bakery that would be very inclusive. Anybody could come in and just have a good time with, like, their family. It would be sort of like a family restaurant, but it would be a bakery, okay? Um, he would treat his uh, staff better than anybody else on this list, probably. Probably even better than Luffy, because uh, he treats everybody like family, right? Uh, let's assume Thatch is still alive, because he was the cook for the Whitebeard crew before he got killed. Uh, we're already doing Parallel Universe here, so let's just imagine Thatch is still alive. Um, but even if he isn't, they could find some other, like, really good chef for it, right? Um, I think he would, so he would have no, no trouble getting the building and, you know, the, the inside of it. I mean, think of, like, generic family restaurant, I guess. You know what it would be like? Whitebeard is the kind of guy, I feel like you would walk into this place, and it would be like one of those restaurants that has shit tacked all over the wall. Like, a deer head, and, like, a fish, and then, like, a, you know, a crossing guard sign, or whatever, like a stop sign, or whatever. It'd be one of those places, but... Instead of all that bunch of crap that really is just on the walls just to take up space... Everything in this bakery would be something that Whitebeard acquired throughout his years of being a pirate. He, he would be like a retired football player or a retired musician or Rocky Balboa after he opened up Adrian's. You know what I mean? Like a, a retired boxer. That's what he would be. He would be a retired pirate opening up a bakery that has all these things that um, are keepsakes from his past. And people would ask him, you know, what's that? He's like, oh, well, that's the, um, I don't know, that's like an anchor. It's like, oh, that's the anchor of Captain John's ship. I picked it up and I threw it right at him. You know, it would be something like that. And Whitebeard would be there every night. He would be the kind of guy you could just sit down and talk to about these crazy adventures he got into. Uh, but how would the baked goods be? How would the actual products be, you know? I feel like they would be pretty good. They would be really good. Um, but I think the atmosphere and just the idea it's Whitebeard here running a bakery, you know, I feel like that alone would be, that would earn enough status just from that alone and the way he treats his employees. So I would say from the baked goods alone, I would just say really good. But then I think I might notch that up to amazing, just because of the atmosphere and all that stuff, right? Uh, but it's Whitebeard, and I feel like, you know, he's like the best pirate. He's super strong. But strength does not... Strength in a powerful devil fruit does not always equate to uh, amazing. Let's see here. I'm, I'm trying to think here. Like, the staff, like, like Boa, Mihawk, Doflamingo, they would all treat, like, the immediate staff very well, I think. Um... I feel like I feel like me okay, I'll put I'll put Whitebeard up here as well in the best category. I'll do that with 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 uh, Whitebeard. Okay. Uh moving on, we have Edward Weevil, Whitebeard's son, quote unquote. Okay, so Weevil, I think I think this is the first person that's going to go in the garbage category. Uh Weevil would not be a good baker. Uh, he's pretty much only good at rampart destruction and obliterating and stepping on and just annihilating anything he comes in contact with. Um, if he tried to start a bakery, he would do his damn best, but I don't think that would go very far. You know what I'm saying? Like, if Miss Bakin got captured and Weevil was like, Oh, Mama, what am I going to do now? When he's like walking through town and... He sees, like, an empty building, and then he sees a bakery across the street, and he's like, oh, I know! I'll make a bakery! And then he just walks in, and he, like, he's trying his best, but he doesn't know how to bake. <laughs> he would just be like, okay, and then he takes, like, he, he would buy all the stuff he needs, but he would just, like, dump the chocolate chips into the sugar, and then, like, throw some eggs in there and throw it in the oven, and he wouldn't know how long to bake it, and he wouldn't know, like, the product would just be horrible, like, and, and like, he wouldn't, he's not a good, Weevil is not a good interior decorator, I'm sorry, um, you know, I, I don't even think he would be able to get the money for this, I think he would just basically, like, find an empty building, break in, and just try his best at opening a bakery, <laughs> you know, like, eh. I'm sorry, Weevil. I don't think you do a good job, you know? 
Um, but he wouldn't be actively trying to kill anyone like Caesar would, so that's that's Weevil there. Eneru. Um Oh god, can you imagine this place? Eneru opening up a bakery. It would be like the singularity point for everything that is Eneru's ego. Okay, a guy that literally thinks he is God, not kind of thinks he is, thinks that he is a god, opening up a bakery, all right? He would be, now he would be the guy that if you came in and you shit-talked anything, the way that it was decorated, the way that the pastries looked or tasted, anything, he is shoving a lightning bolt right down your throat to go along with that muffin. You know what I mean? Like, well, muffin's all right. Nah, it's kind of stale. Boom! And you are just a smoking crater in the middle. Like, the floor would have to be made of rubber because he would electrocute people so damn much. Um, you know, like, that would be a problem. Eneru's Bakery. Here's the thing. The appearance would be good. It's just picture like a traditional, kind of like the shrine he lived in. Imagine the Maxim. Picture the Maxim as uh, like a bakery design, because that's kind of like Eneru's aesthetic that he really enjoys. So it'd be, there'd be like giant golden like pillars holding it up, and they're like that face, like the face that was on the Maxim, that would be in there too on the wall. Um, that kind of like style of art he would have, because he clearly has an affinity for it. So that would be how it would be decorated. It would be very ostentatious, very in your face, but it would be fine. It would be clean. You know, Eneru is not going to run up like a dirty shop or whatever. Like it would be clean. Um, and but the pastries, though, he would completely skip out on. He would just like take the pastries and like electrocute them and just be like, here are the pastries. And it doesn't matter if they're burned. It doesn't matter if they're burnt to a crisp. Like, they're just a pile of ashes. If anybody said anything negative, he has such a big ego, he would just nuke you right there. Like, right where you stood, okay? Um, th I mean, on the, on the other side, this place would have five-star Yelp reviews. Because nobody's going to say anything bad. This is actually, honestly, the worst... This is, like, the worst possible situation when you think about it. Because no one would be able to stop him. OK, the health inspector comes in. He's like, you can't be serving charred pieces of like, like, this is horrible. This is inedible. Nobody can eat this. Bam. You know what I mean? I'm failing you. Bam. You know, like, so it would be open and you would have to eat there because if you don't, like if Eneru's standing outside like humans come into my bakery and bow down before my greatness. Today I am making fresh donuts. Donuts and bear claws. Have a delicious bear claw. And everybody around would be like, eh, I'm sorry, I gotta get to work. BAM! Just electrocuted. Like, would anyone else care for a bear claw? I'd be like, yes, 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 okay, sure, fine. They would go in, they would have the bear claw, they'd be like, Sometimes they would turn out okay. Sometimes they would be fine. Sometimes he would just use the right amount of electricity to make things properly, okay? Every once in a while. But he wouldn't care. He would not give a shit about it. the recipe. He'd be, like, he'd be looking at the recipe for the pie, and he would be like, hmm, crack pie? <laughs> That's a recipe! <laughs> crack pie! <laughs> okay, uh, how do you make crack pie? Actually, it looks really good. <laughs> I don't know if that's actual crack on it, but okay. Um, yeah, anyway. But he'd be looking at this recipe like, ah, uh, yes. Uh, uh, what do we have? Rhubarb pie. Yes, I'm making a rhubarb pie tonight. And he would put on the apron and the chef's hat, and then he would just take all the ingredients, put it in the pie tin, put on the crust, and just be like, zap it, and then just be like, Pss. all right, here is the pie. And it doesn't matter if it's overcooked, undercooked, it's going out, and whoever ordered it better eat all of it, and they better give him five stars on Yelp. And there is no other opportunity here. So this is actually, you know what? I'm putting it as <laughs> because like 
it's like you're in this, it's like you're in the episode of the Twilight Zone or something. It's like you're in the episode of the Twilight Zone where the little kid has psychic powers and no one can say anything, like, upsetting or bad because the kid will, like, teleport you away into the darkness dimension or whatever. In fact, this is worse because in the Twilight Zone, it was implied they just get sent away to, like, a cornfield or something. Here, it's like that you just straight up get killed in, like, one of the worst ways possible. Like, your body is not even left afterwards, you know what I mean? So... Yeah, okay, there we go. There's Enaru. Okay, uh, next up is uh, Eustace Kid. All right, now, this would be like if a car mechanic decided to start a bakery, but didn't really know anything about baking food. He just decided to start a bakery. Um, picture a 1980s grunge sort of aesthetic. Not grunge, grunge would be 90s. Definitely 80s punk would be more kids speed. So just to picture that you walk in sort of like a biker bar, but it's a bakery. It would be it would be a juxtaposition that I'm not sure would work. Um, because when I think of bakeries, I think of like a little old lady walking in and be like, oh, I'm here to buy some nice bread, you know, like, but just picture like, like the old lady walks in and there's some dude with like a spiked mohawk, like a red spiked mohawk sitting behind the counter with like a, a vest with like patches all over it, sleeve tats, piercings all over the place and be like, hey there, grandma, you want some bread? We're making great bread today, fresh out of the oven. Yeah. And it turns up some freaking like ACDC in the background or whatever. And then uh, the old lady would just be like, I'm just going to go to the other bakery down the street now. By the way, by the way, I'm picturing, I guess they would be at different locations, but just picture all of these bakeries on the same street. <laughs> I'm starting to crack. Oh, my God. I've been, I've been here an hour and 23 minutes, and we're not even halfway done already. <laughs> eh. I think kid would be in the eh category. Um, the aesthetic would be very interesting. It would be unique. I just don't think it would fit very well with a bakery kind of aesthetic. You know what I mean? And the baked goods themselves, I feel, would be very subpar. They would be okay, um, but they would mess up probably a lot. And, y you know, that's just how it goes. And, they, and unlike Bartolomeo... Kid would not probably try to get better. He would just make whatever and then serve it to the people. And, uh, you know, but it would probably be like a hangout for like the grunge punk, you know, kind of crowd, I guess. Okay. So, yeah, let's go with that. Uh, oh, Frankie. Frankie opening a bakery. Would it be a super bakery? Absolutely, it would. He's the very best. Uh, no, okay. Uh, Frankie Bakery. Let's see here. Um, Frankie... He's like the kind of dad that would be good at like like barbecuing, you know. It's like it's like, "Hey there, son, I'm going to go fire up the gas grill with that propane and I'm going to make some burgers and steaks." That's the kind of cooking that Frankie does. You know what I mean? Frankie doesn't like the exact opposite is Frankie like baking a souffle. <laughs> you know what I mean? Frankie's least favorite food are marshmallows because they're too soft. So he's not a fan of, like, very soft foods. So pastries would probably not be up his alley. Um, I'm sorry, Frankie. I'm really sorry, dude. But I think I have to put you in eh here. Uh, you know, it's just not, it's not the thing that he likes. I mean, if you give him a cake or a cookie or a pie, he'll eat it. He'll enjoy it. But Frankie's not the kind of guy that's going to sit around making pies all day. You know, that's just not what he does. If he works at a bakery... He'll try his best, and he has the robot arms and everything, so, like, a little bit like Kuma. So, yeah, he would follow the recipe, but I think he would mess it up a lot, you know? I think he would just really mess up the recipes, um, you know? It would just basically be somebody very inexperienced, has no experience making baked goods, making baked goods. And it would just be like, you know, every once in a while he would get lucky. But I'm sorry, Frankie. I got to put you in the egg category. Now, if Frankie was going to open up like a, a, like a barbecue joint, like if he was going to go open up like a rib restaurant or whatever, uh, you know, and it's just like, yeah, this is my super 
barbecue place. I don't know. It's been like over an hour. I'm done with the clever puns and business names. But um, yeah, that would be great. That would be probably like the best barbecue joint you could ever imagine, right? But just a bakery, it's just not Frankie's style. You know, he would try to Im implement like ribs or something into the baked goods and it's just, it wouldn't fit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Frankie. Um, so who's next? Uh, Moria is next. Okay. Moria. Hmm. Moria would do none of the work. He would make zombies do all of it for him. Okay. We all on agreement there. Cause that's how he ran a pirate crew. Uh, he slept all day. He slept like 22 hours a day and let his freaking zombies do everything. So I got to ask you a simple question. Would you be okay if zombies prepared your food for you? Seems like a bit of a health risk you know seems like sort of like not a cross-contamination kind of situation you know it's like the zombies once again they'll do the best they can do but <laughs> they're zombies it'd be like oh make sure to put in oven bake pie 45 minutes okay they pick up the pie and their nose falls off and like lands in the pie is like oh sticks it in the oven and cooks it Things would get overcooked all the time. Things would burn, you know, but they would take it out and it would like burn his flesh, but they, would, they couldn't feel it because they're zombies. So it's like they wouldn't under, they don't have taste buds or their taste buds are so rotted. They wouldn't be able to tell what's good and bad. They wouldn't be able to tell if they got a shipment of like rotting uh, vegetables, you know, to make like, I think vegetable pie is a thing or like just rotting like strawberries and they're going to make like a strawberry uh, tart or something. The strawberries could be covered in mold and like rotting apart. More is not going to care and the zombies certainly aren't going to care so they would just use these like moldy strawberries to make a danish and they'd just be like here you are Ugh. and you'd be looking at this thing and it'd be like oh god plus their hands are so like they're they're rotting hands you know covered in like you know decaying flesh you know like not you know the health inspector would shut this down in a millisecond even so I think it still ranks higher than Caesar and Eneru because Caesar and Eneru are actively killing people, okay? Moria's just lazy. <laughs> Moria's just a lazy piece of shit that doesn't want to do stuff on his own and would just make zombies do everything. And the zombies are zombies. They can't help what they are, you know? They'll try to make the baked goods. They're just going to not be very good at it. And it was just like, they would just like infect everything, you know, with like germs and shit, right? So, yeah, there you go. Uh, Hyrudin. Oh, first giant on the list. Hyrudin. Um, he would he would definitely make, like, the big sort of portions. You know what I mean? Like, the giant gob. The giant Oreo. You know the kind of things, like, the special sort of challenges you go to certain restaurants. You, like, if you can finish the super mega pizza. You know, like, you ever see Idiocracy? Extra big ass wings. Extra big ass taco. You know, that would be the kind of thing that Hyrudin would do. It's like, you go to his bakery. It, it would have to be a huge bakery, and giants would work there. So it would be like a giant giant themed cafe sort of like a maid cafe except with giants the giants could wear maid outfits i suppose um oh my god that would actually be that would actually be cool um, imagine imagine a like a giant sized bakery with giants working in there, but they're all dressed very impeccably. You know, like Hyrudin is wearing a fancy tailored suit and like a tail coat, and like Girth is there and she's working as well, and she's wearing a um, a maid outfit. And it's like they're all they're all just dressed very well as they deliver your food, but they're all giants. So that I think, in terms of style, I think that a lot of people would probably go to that. Uh, you know, um, you know, uh, and, but and then he would also have like the if you can finish, you know, like, we'll, we'll serve regular-sized or, like, relatively normal-sized portions for humans. They're still going to be big. Like, if you go in there and you order a, um, let's see, uh, you order a bagel, it's going to be a big-ass bagel. It's going to be a really jumbo-sized bagel. But from a giant's perspective, it's as, like, small as, like, like a human, like, oh, yeah, sure, this is good. You know, not because they wouldn't be able to make it because it would be too small. It would be giants making food for humans, Okay. I mean, I guess it could be a giant bakery just for other giants. You know, I guess it doesn't have to be for humans. In that case, Arlong could open a bakery for other fishmen and merfolk, but I still don't think he'd be happy being... I'll still leave him in air because I don't think he'd be happy working in a bakery at all. You know, he would hate it. Um, 
You know, like, so then, uh, yeah, Hyrudin would make stuff for, like, other giants or humans, but they would just be very big portions. Uh, but then then again, in One Piece, you have people like Luffy that can eat a lot of food. You know what I mean? So Luffy would walk in, and he'd be like, Hyrudin, I want, like, the biggest piece of pie you got. And he would be like, all right, Luffy, for you, we have the giant pie. If you can finish the giant pie in under two hours, you get, like, free food for a week. Luffy could do it, you know what I mean? There's a lot of other characters in One Piece that could definitely do that, so that aren't giants. So, yeah, I, I think this was a good aesthetic here. I think the location, uh, maybe on Elbaf, would be a nice place. Um, I think I'm going to put uh, Hyrudin up here as amazing. Uh, yeah, just with the portion size alone, you can't, you can't look over the portions. And it would be cheap, too, because... If he's selling the food to other giants, then the portions for the giants would be, like, normal price. You know, like $2 for a bagel or whatever. But here, it's like a giant bagel that you would not be able to finish. So you would definitely get your, your money's worth at, um, at, at Hyrudin's Bakery. I think Hyrudin would do a really good job. Yeah, sure. So let's, let's keep it there. Okay. Uh, next up is Ideo. I don't know why I put Ideo on here. Ideo would have, like, basically Adrian's from Rocky, you know, because he's a retired boxer, I guess. Um, okay, retired boxer. Uh, I, I feel like he would just be eh. Yeah, I feel like Ideo would just be eh. Fujitora! Uh, he's blind. <laughs> he's blind. Um... I mean, he would have a staff working for him. He can sense the auras of people, like with uh, with observation hockey. He has really good observation hockey, though. So could he use his observation hockey to sense what kind of pastry preference people would like? You know, this person walks in and just like, hmm, that person wants a, uh, uh, you know, a... Uh, uh, powder donut. I, I don't know. Like, whatever. Like, would he be able to use observation like that? I don't know if that's how observation works. I think it would just be allowing him to sense things around him, right? Um, you know? Um, I imagine the style would be very Zen. It would be, like, very uh, Zen Buddhism, like, Shinto kind of sense. Zen Buddhism is more Chinese. It originated in China. So I would say maybe, like, Shinto. Like, you walk in, and it's, like, traditional Japanese kind of, like, there'd be, like, a rock garden. There'd be, like, a bonsai tree, maybe some little cherry blossoms, like, like artwork on the walls and stuff like that. It would be very peaceful. I don't think it would be as peaceful as Brooks, but it would be nice. And the product would be okay as well. I think I'm just going to put Fujitora in the good category. Because, yeah, he's blind, but he would have a staff, and he would treat the staff very well, and he would get around just fine. He could sense... He might, like, maybe, you know... No, I don't think he would even bump into, like, the furniture, because you can sense... He can sense things around him. Maybe he would every now and then, but he, he's perfectly fine. So, yeah, I, I think the aesthetic would be good, and the product would be okay. Yeah, so I would say that. Bonnie. Okay, Bonnie. Um, well, she certainly likes to eat, right? So she's definitely a connoisseur of pretty much everything. Um, she likes pizza is her favorite food. So we actually, I, I mean, she's always like, I want pizza. I want, you know, chicken wings or whatever. I want burgers. She's always stuffing that kind of food into her mouth. She's never really, we've never seen her eat like cakes and stuff. That's more of Big Mom's thing, honestly. People thought that Bonnie was related to Big Mom for a long time because of that reason, which I guess maybe she might be, but maybe she's Big Mom's, like, long-lost twin sister. Who knows? I don't know. Uh, with the time-time fruit, not the time-time fruit, but with her aging devil fruit, I guess she could be Big Mom's long-lost sister. Who knows? Um, Big Mom's biological parents were normal humans. Maybe Big Mom ended up as, like, a giant, and Jory Bonnie ended up just, like, a normal-sized human. Whatever. Anyway, um, so, hmm. <sighs> I feel like she would just eat everything. I feel like, you know, they would make the food, and it's like, okay, we got a tray of tarts here, and they'd be like, let me check them first. Om nom nom, and then she would just eat all of them. He'd be like, Bonnie, Captain Bonnie, what are we going to do? And he's like, he's like, I'm sorry, just make more. I'd be like, but they've been waiting for the, like, you ate the last three orders for table six. And just like, they're going to leave. And just like, ah, let them leave. Just make me more food, you know? So I, I just feel like it would be self-defeating at that point. You know what I mean? I feel like it wouldn't go anywhere. The food would probably be okay. It's just that she would eat all of it probably um, or eat most of it. I don't want to put Bonnie in garbage tier, but I feel like eh. I feel like eh for Bonnie. It would just be like, 
Yeah, you can go to Bonnie's Bakery. The food is okay, but she eats, like, most of it. What do you mean? He's like, well, what I mean is when you order something from there, there's probably a good 60 to 40% shot that she's going to eat it in favor of her eating it first before it even gets to your table. Be like, how can she eat so much food? It's like, that's what we all say, you know? But she can apparently eat, she's like, apparently can eat just an endless amount of food, so she'll never get, like, satiated. So that could be an actual problem for running a restaurant or a bakery or any place that sells food. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't want to put her in garbage, though. I don't want to, because the food would still be, like edible like if, if you can get it it would be it would be okay yeah all right let's go with that you would have to fight for it basically like if you were luffy or one of the straw hats like if you were a strong character that went to the bakery you might be able to hurry up and like get the you know it's like i order a donut okay here you go before she eats it you like grab it and be like oh you have to eat your food fast okay it's like you know survival of the fittest at bonnie's bakery but you, you can maybe make it work um, yeah, okay. So, then we have Jinbei. Jinbei is here. Um, let's see. Jinbei, it was stated that he doesn't like eating parfaits because he feels like that would be hard to eat. Uh, no, no, or did he like parfaits? I can't remember if it was his least favorite food or his favorite food. I don't know. I think it says, like, because they were difficult to eat. I think it was his least favorite. Yeah, he just likes eating fresh fruits, I think. So, a lot of fruits. A lot of cherry pies, like good cherry pies, strawberry pie, um, blueberry pie, a lot of fruits would be apple pie. That would be, that would be Jinbei's specialty because he likes fruits. Okay. So, um, that would be his thing where you just come to Jinbei's pie plaza, Jinbei's pie plaza, you know, and he's all these different kinds of pie and, and Jinbei, I imagine would be very jolly. He would walk out, he would have the apron, he'd be covered in dough and he'd be like, Hey there, welcome to Jinbei's pie plaza. We have all these pies here. You know, it would be a very family friendly environment. There would be a giant chart that has every pie that you can imagine on there. And it would be like, I want that. I want that. He's like, okay, we'll get that for you. And here you go. And the pie would be delicious. I think it would be really good. Um, he would treat the staff very well. Um, um, you know, I imagine it'd be humans and fishmen working side by side here. This would all work out. A place for equality. You know, that would be Gene Bay's, Gene Bay's bakery. Um, I'll put him at an amazing, I'll put him as an amazing bakery. I think, I think that if he focused on pies and a lot of people love pies and there's so many ways you can make them too, uh, with so many ingredients, you know, I think, I think he would do amazing with that. Okay. Um, and it would be affordable, too. It would be really affordable. Um, okay, Kaido. Kaido. Hmm. All right. Kaido. I don't think he would be unholy, because I don't think, like, he would actively try to kill you. I mean, like, if you shit-talk the, the baked goods, I don't think he would immediately kill you. It really just depends on what phase of drunk he's in at the moment, which you know he's going to be drunk 90% of the time while working at this bakery. You know, you're going to walk in and it's just going to be like, hello. It's going to be like a cave. It's going to be modeled after a cave. I don't think, well, no, I shouldn't say that because Kaido does sort of have an eye for interior decoration because most of the of his castle at Onigashima looks pretty fancy. It's like that typical Japanese architecture. That's what it would look like. OK, so it would look it would look very presentable. OK, uh, Kaido would be there. You walk in, you'd be like, um, hello, can I order, uh, let's see, or banana bread. You walk into Kaido's bakery. I'd like to order some banana bread, please. Kaido would be like, whatever you want. I'm like, um, banana bread is like, all right then. And he like gets up and he's like, oh, all right. Make some damn banana bread. Glug, 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 glug. Um, should you be drinking? Shut up. I'm making the banana bread. He makes it. It's probably going to taste like shit. Um, you know, and he's probably going to probably going to be some sake. Everything he makes is going to have alcohol in it. Everything. Whether or not he intended there to be alcohol in there or just because of him drinking it, it ended up in the in the uh, the mixing bowl like it's going to end up in there. Right. Um, he's just like, all right, here you go. Thank you. And it's like, all right, we'll get the f out of here. And then just <laughs> I think that would be it. That would be Kaido's bakery. Kaido goes in garbage, I think. Kaido goes in garbage. So we're making progress. My voice is starting to go, but we're making progress. Uh, we have Killer. 
Uh, what kind of uh, what kind of baked good would Killer make? Oh, fudge! I, it's a crazy. We're over an hour into this, almost two hours into this. I haven't talked about fudge yet. I put it on here. My mom makes amazing chocolate peanut butter fudge. It's insane. Uh, she's been doing it since like 2005, and she's won like 200 blue ribbons uh, over the years across all these county fairs. We've been to like the state farm show a few times uh, with her. Uh, well, that's with her cakes. She makes amazing cakes as well. But fudge is also something she's really known for. So I'm gonna go with Killer making fudge. Fudge. Killer fudge. Let's just call it that. Killer fudge. Um, I've always imagined Killer has a little bit of a be of a better head on his shoulders in terms of like responsibility and like finances than uh, Kid does. So I think Killer would do a better job than Kid. And in that regard, I'm gonna put Killer one step, one tier higher than Kid would. Uh, it would still have a very similar aesthetic. Uh, in terms of like the the punk grunge scene, but it might be downplayed a little bit. Uh, Killer would be smart enough to be like, all right, we need people to actually come in here to eat, so let's not make it too intimidating in here. Let's not have the crazy guy with the mohawk talking to grandma at the uh, at the counter. You know, it's like, hey, hey, old man, what are you doing in here? Like, I'm just here to buy some fudge, sonny. He's like, ah, you know, let's dial that back a little bit, okay? Let's have relatively normal outfits and, like, uniforms here at Killer Fudge, you know? Um, let's have a little bit of an edge, but not too much of one. You know what I'm saying, right? Actually, that'd be really cool because because when my mom, um, so when you make fudge, it's basically you cook it, well, you you bake it on the stove, okay? And she's, I know how to do it myself. I can make the peanut butter fudge as well. Probably not as good as my mom can, but I, I, I know the recipe. I can make it. So you got to get a pot, put it on the stove. You got to mix everything together. There's a giant pile of sugar. Like if you look at the raw ingredients, like in the pot on the stove before you start heating it up, it's just like butter and just a pile of sugar on top of said butter and then just a giant pile of peanut butter on that. But anyway, so you got to start turning and churning the fudge. You got to put like marshmallow cream in there. You got to mix everything. You got to be mixing it constantly or it'll burn. I'm just teaching you how to make fudge at this point. But you got to keep going, 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 turning it. It'll splatter all over the place. You can get fudge burned. My mom has, <laughs> that's happened to her plenty of times. She has plenty of marks on her arms from like getting fudge burns on her skin or whatever. You know, spinning it, spinning it. Then you pour it out onto a, um, like a, like a cake sheet. And then you stick it in the fridge. You wait for it to cool for a little bit. And then you stick it in the fridge. It has to stay in the fridge overnight, preferably, until it hardens. And then you got to take a special, like, cutting device. It's basically like a sheet, like a giant razor blade, kind of. And then you use that to kind of, like, slice it apart in, like, actual, like, like uh, cubes of fudge. Okay, so there you go. That's how you make fudge. Um, and so Killer, I'm, I'm saying with his Punisher blades, would do a really good job at that. Like, here's the Killer fudge, you know? So, yeah, I think Killer would make some really good fudge. That, that would work, okay? Some pretty good. Not as good as my mom's, but pretty good. Okay, next up is Don Krieg. That was the easiest one, I think. Uh, no, seriously, he would treat his employees like garbage. Um, his his pies would be garbage. The interior design would be garbage. Um, everything would be garbage with Don Krieg, okay? He would have enough money, but it would just be like, I don't even know. I don't know. him. I kind of threw away the whole idea of them getting loans out at some point because I, I just had like so much stuff to go through here. But if he could get the money... I mean, maybe he might make, like, a like a decent kind of bakery. It would be normal. It would be, like, a decent bakery. Um, he would kind of try... He would be the same as Whitebeard. He would try to be the same as Whitebeard. He would try to be this guy that would be like, let me tell you about all my amazing feats. I'm Don Krieg. But he would just be such a freaking blowhard that, like, you just wouldn't want to deal with the guy. And he would just never shut up. Kind of like how I'm feeling right now. You know, he would just be like, let me tell you the time I sunk 10 marine battleships with one cannonball. You know, he would be that kind of guy. And it would just be exhausting. So, garbage, definitely. Oh my god, I think we're actually making headway here. We're actually making progress. Okay, Kuro. Um, okay, okay, okay. Kuro, this is how it would go. Kuro would open a bakery because he would be tired of being a pirate, and then he would get sick at working at the bakery, and then he would make some convoluted plan to sort of have an insurance scam to, like, burn the bakery down and make off with the insurance money. Um, maybe he would succeed with that. Maybe he wouldn't. He's Captain Kuro of a thousand plans. I think he would probably succeed in the, uh in the insurance scam department. Um, so it wouldn't be garbage. He would make like a decent bakery, 
But then, uh, actually, you know what? You know what? I'm putting him in really good. I'm putting him in really good because this is why. He was a pretty good butler, right? Like, he was doing his job as a butler with Kaya really well. It's just he decided, I'm just going to, like, kill her and take all of her money. <laughs> you know, that's what decided it. So he would have a really good bakery, and the people there would be happy, and he would be doing a good job. And then one day, though, he would just be like, he would just wake up one day, and he's being like, eh, I don't want to do this anymore. I will hatch a scheme, you know? And then he would do some insurance scheme to, like, you know, like, you know, burn the bakery down and get the insurance money, and then he would just skip town and do something else. That's what Kuro would do. He would he would be completely oblivious to the fact he had a perfectly good thing going on here. Like, he could have stayed as a butler at Kaya's mansion. He got paid a decent amount of money, and Kaya was a pretty good, you know, like, Kaya was not cruel. Kaya was not, like, mistreating him or anything. It's just that his intelligence got the best of him. His, his scheming got the best of him, and he just couldn't, he wasn't happy living that normal life, okay? That would be him. He would make a really good bakery, but then one day the shop would just burn down, and then Kuro would just skip town, and you just never would see him again. It'd be like, and everybody in town would be none the wiser. Everybody in town would just be like, man, I wish that Captain Kuro guy, I wish that Clahador guy opens another bakery. It was pretty good. I wonder what happened to that guy. That's Captain Kuro. Uh, Leo. Leo in the Tontatas. Um... You know, it was mentioned that the Tontadas can cultivate any plant. So they would be really good at growing. Like, they would grow the freshest fruits and vegetables that you would imagine, that you could have, right? So it would be like um, a garden, right? It would be like green bits. Just actually, it would be like the Mushroom Kingdom or like green bits, sort of. Like, it would be a fairy tale esque sort of design for the bakery where you sit on, like, mushrooms, like toadstools or whatever, and the table is like a, a piece of, like, a, like, a, like um, the trunk of a tree, but it's, like, really clean, and it makes, like, like, it's like the trunk of a tree, but it's, like, varnished, so it's, like, smooth on the front so you can eat there and eat your food. It would be delicious. It'd be a very fairy tale esque setting um and i think them all working together it would be like it would be like the smurfs like the smurfs all working together to make a single pie or like the keebler elves that that would probably be a better um you know uh analogy here it would be the keebler elves working together to make you know baked goods so you know what i'm gonna put i'm gonna put leo in the tone tatas i'm gonna put up here is amazing i think they would do a good job and they have the strength comparable to humans so it wouldn't be like they're slow like they it takes them three hours to make a single cookie and just bring it over to your table. No, working together, they could do an amazing job. And they're one big family, so they would work together really well. You might have to stoop down to get in to the area. Like, it'd be maybe a little bit of a low ceiling to eat there. Um, but I think overall, what the hell was up with my hair there? I think overall, um, it would be a really delicious place to eat, and the atmosphere would be great. So let me let me put it with that, yeah. Um, actually, you know what? I think I'm going to... It's the Keebler Elves, basically. Let's put Leo up here. Let's put Leo up here. Yeah, I think I think the Tontadas would do a really, really good job. Um, all working together in perfect unison. They'd be singing a song in the background. And it's like, we're all cooking these delicious cakes and cookies, you know? And just like, everyone's like, oh, this is such a nice place. You know, <laughs> like, this is such a cute bakery. I'm going to put Leo in the best. Screw it. Okay. Uh, next up, we have Magellan. Um, <laughs> um, uh, Do you ever eat a poison donut? Yeah. Sorry, Magellan. Magellan's going to go into unholy because it would... Here's the sad thing, okay? Caesars would be a mad scientist lab where you would be his guinea pig to test his new, like, chemicals and, and, and stuff, right? Eneru would be a vindictive egomaniac with a god complex that would just nuke everybody that didn't like his stuff or didn't want to try his new baked goods, okay? Magellan would legitimately try to make a bakery, like to start a really decent bakery. He would wear the suit and tie. He would go get a loan. He'd be like, hello there, I'm Warden Magellan. Um, I uh, just recently quit my vice warden position. I I'd like to start a bakery, please. Um, he would have all the documents. He would fill out all the paperwork. He'd be, he'd be wearing like bifocal glasses and he'd be looking at the forms and he's like, okay, sir, you need to fill out form, you know, 72-B for bakery. And he's like, very well, yes. Um, okay, this says uh, right here my, uh, my tax information. Now, do you want from the last, uh, you know, how many years do you need? Well, well for this loan, you need this. So he would fill out all the information, do a T. Uh, he would be very focused, and he'd be like, very well, very well. Um, 
the design of the bakery would be purple. Uh, the outside of it would be like it would be called like the I don't know what Venom Demon or something, right? It would it would it would look like uh like a uh, venom like dripping off the sides. I don't know if that would be appealing or not, but it would be purple, and it would have like a really cool design and everything. Uh, he would spend a lot of money on the counters and the floor and the decorations. Um, everything would be looking amazing. It would look really good. Like you'd walk into the place and you'd be like, "Wow, this is different." but I like this and you'd sit down and you look at what they have and you'd be like well uh, can I have uh, the uh, the crow bush no the waffles yeah I, I put waffles waffles are bakery items yeah I like some waffles please can I get some blueberries on those with whipped cream and Magellan would be like so happy he'd be so happy his first customer would come in and he'd be like oh absolutely sir absolutely he would run in he would make the waffles with the whipped cream and everything and he would bring it back the person would take one bite <gasps> And then violently puke all over the place. And then they would run out and be like, oh, oh God, what, what did I just, what did I just eat? And be like, oh, that's my patented Venom Waffle. It's my favorite. It's like, wait, wait, what? Venom Waffle, that's, that's a term, right? Nope. Real rattlesnake venom went right into that waffle. I love it. It's delicious. You might have some diarrhea later tonight, though. He's already dead. <laughs> the man is already dead. He's just like on the freaking like counter. Like it's like, wait a second, you, you, did you guys ever um, you, you ever watch WKUK, the whitest kids you know? Um, I'm a big fan of their sketch group, and you know I go back and watch their stuff every now and then, and I watch their uh, their Twitch streams that they do and everything. Rest in peace, Trevor, by the way. But anyway, they did a sketch on whitest kids you know that was um, uh, tar toast, and go and watch it. Just type in WKUK tar toast and that would basically be magellan magellan's bakery okay where you know he would eat it and be like what 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 was in that i don't know what that was and like that was rattlesnake venom rattlesnake venom what i'm gonna i'm gonna die and just like Ugh. you know like that's like that's what it would be so i'm sorry magellan i'm really sorry he wanted it to be like here but it ended up here. Um, also, I find it ironic that in the unholy category, we have Eneru, who you, is claimed to be a god, and Magellan, who was the devil, who ruled over hell. So it's actually very appropriate that Magellan is in the unholy category. I didn't even plan that. That just worked out perfectly there. Okay. So next up, we have, uh, we have Blackbeard. We have Marshall D. Teach. Um... I gotta be honest with you, I don't think it would be bad. Um, it would be like Jinbei. It would be like an evil version of Jinbei's bakery, uh, focused on pies. Uh, the cherry pie would be the specialty. Uh, but as Luffy stated, you know, he did not like the cherry pie, but Blackbeard really liked it, you know? So he would make a cherry pie that some people like. Like, if you're chaotic... No, no, if you're, if you're evil aligned, you would like the cherry pie. If you're good aligned, you would not like the cherry pie. It would be alignment pies. That's what you could call it. Alignment pies. Uh, chaotic evil pies, okay? So you go and they have other pies too. You can order like a, a lemon pie or whatever, uh, like a marangu or whatever you want kind of pie, a chocolate pie or whatever. But the cherry pie would be their specialty. That would be the pie that like, well, it's our specialty. Everybody loves it except for some people. You know what I mean? Um, and so, yeah, that's how it would go. Um, it's like an evil version of Jinbei. I, I gotta be honest with you, and, like, the way that Blackbeard treats his crew, it's actually not bad. He treats them well, you know? Like, he's not, like, beating the crap out of Lafitte or Shiryu or anything. I'm, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put him down into really good category. I'll, I'll put him in the really good category. It's a really good pie place. I think the, um, the equality aspect of Gene Bay's and everybody's together, I think that would be better. Uh, but Blackbeard could make a mean pie, I think. I think he would be all right with that, yeah. It would be like a pie place that only, like, like criminals of the city or whatever hang out in. It would be like if the Joker opened up a bakery. <laughs> we should do this with, like, all the Marvel and, and, like, the DC characters and everything. Like, oh, God. All right, all right, who's next? Garp. Uh, Garp really loves donuts. Uh, oh, I didn't have Kata Curry on here. Damn it! Okay. 
<laughs> all right, all right. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Kata Curry would probably be in the amazing category. Uh, yeah, or if not the best category, probably the amazing category. Uh, but okay, we have Garp, who also equally likes donuts. In fact, I would like to see Kata Curry and Garp get into a donut eating contest. I think they would both, you know, I don't know who would win in that. Um, you know, Garp's got more experience, but Kata Curry, man, he, he can turn into donuts. He's become one with the donut. So Garp would definitely specialize in donuts. I imagine Garp, you know what? His would be like not even a place you go and sit down. Um, it would be sort of like a Dunkin' Donuts drive through kind of situation for Garp. Um, the place you go early in the morning, you drive through, you get your, do you get your donuts, you get your coffee, and you're on your merry way to work. You know, that's the kind of place, that's the kind of joint I think Garp would run. You know, uh, in which case, I think it would just be, uh, I think it would just be good. You know, it'd be good. It would be like a breakfast kind of thing. Nothing fancy. He wouldn't be making croquem bushes and, and semla and like, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, the souffles. He wouldn't be doing anything like that. He'd be making gobs, donuts, uh, bagels, muffins, um, you know, uh, that kind of stuff. Yeah, that would be more like Danish's bear claws for breakfast. That would be more garp speed. Um, it would be pretty solid, though. Uh, maybe I should bump him up a bit. Maybe I should put him in really good. Nah, I'll keep him in good. I think Garp would do a good job. Luffy. Oh, boy. Well, Luffy, Luffy, Luffy. Where are you going, Luffy? He doesn't like to cook. In fact, we've seen Luffy cook. It's not a pleasant sight. Uh, I don't think it would be much better with him baking. Because baking, you have to be more accurate. Cooking, you can kind of just be like, all right, it says one teaspoon of garlic powder. You can go a little over. It'll be fine. Baking, you got to be exact. If you put in an extra teaspoon of baking soda into a recipe, it could fuck the whole thing up, okay? And we saw what happened when Luffy was making curry. He was just throwing shit in there. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking of the curry. We have we have an objective example of Luffy's cooking. And like I said, baking is more complex than cooking a lot of times. And look where the cooking ended up. Luffy would, there would be raw eggs in there. Um, there would be like, he would not care about cross-contamination at all, you know. Um, if he had to pick something up off the floor, uh, or if he had to, like, if he accidentally, let's say he accidentally dropped, like, he's, he's cooking or something, and he's using the eggs, and he's beating the eggs, he gets egg all over his hand, and then it's like something gets dropped into the trash can or on the floor, and he just picks it up off the floor, and he just starts, you know, just start mixing the eggs, uh, there's egg shells in there. Uh, he just does not give a shit, um, just throws it all in the pan, chucks it in the oven, cooks it for whatever, takes it out, and he's like, here you go, guys, there's eggshells in there, there's, um, dirt and hair from, like, the floor in there, um, you know, yeah, you know what, okay, but, 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 would it kill you? <laughs> That's the question, would it kill you? The Straw Hats ate the curry. They still ate the curry, and none of them died. They almost, eh, but they didn't die. All right, I'll put Luffy up here. I'll move him up front. I'll move him up front next to Weevil there. Okay, okay, okay. I think, honestly, Weevil and Luffy would have very similar baking skills, I think, honestly. Okay. Uh, next up is Morgan, Captain Morgan. I put Morgan on here, but I didn't put Kata Curry. What can you do? Um, okay, so Morgan. It would be a totalitarian kitchen. It would be a totalitarian, cruel dictator despot that rules over this bakery. <laughs> there would be a giant statue to Morgan outside. He'd be like, you know, make the muffins! I told you to make 13 muffins, not 14 muffins! Bam! Right in the face! You know, like, that's how I said a baker's dozen! Bam! Not a non-baker's dozen! That's, that's how he would do it. Uh, very, very cruel. One of the cruelest people on this list in terms of, like, the subordinates that worked under him. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'll put him in garbage. I'll put him in garbage tier. What other tier list would you see Luffy and Morgan on the same tier? Like, I ask you. This one, I would see. 
doesn't matter how good the, the baked goods is, which I don't think he would be able to make. Oh, well, he wouldn't do it. He would have other people do it. But I don't think, like, they would be on the level of anything to write home about. But just the way he treats his employees would be garbage. Uh, but, like I said, he didn't. He, he still had his crew working for him. Like, to, to our knowledge, he wasn't, like, slicing his subordinates in half with his giant axe. He, he probably just used that thing for intimidation to get people to do what he wants. But he wasn't going around, like, chopping off people's heads and, like, killing people wantingly, right? Um, so I'll put him in garbage. Nami. Okay. Uh, Nami is a very good cook. She's a pretty decent cook. Uh, I would say above decent, I think, for a price. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> Um, you know, she would have like an orange uh, meringue sort of pie or whatever. That would be very delicious. Orange tarts. Everything would be orange themed, of course. Oranges. Um, oh, what, what were the um, oh, what was that thing I had not too long ago? Come on, guys. What was that? What was that uh, appetizer I ordered at that Mexican restaurant not too long ago? Um, oh, what were they? They were like oranges, but they started with the letter P. Uh, plantain. That's it. It's a plantain. Sorry. This one's super recognizable. Plantains are thick, giant, and long-looking bananas. It is low in sugar and higher in starch and can be cooked in because it's sturdy. Okay. Okay, you know what? All right, so plantains. All right, so when I ordered them, they looked, they were orange. They were orange when I ordered them, and you could dip them in sour cream and feta cheese. They were so good, and they tasted kind of like an orange to me. But um, I guess it was just the brown sugar and the seasonings and them being cooked uh, turned them orange because I guess they're more like a banana. Sorry, I don't know, but it was really good. It was a really good appetizer. I'm kind of craving it right now, actually. But with Nami, of course, you'd have Mekons, tangerines, uh, maybe grapefruits, oranges, just ordinary oranges. Everything would be orange-themed, of course. Um, and I think she would do a really good job, and I think she would treat all of the staff very well as well, like a big sister kind of type, um, you know? So, yeah, I, I think Nami, and also, I mean, it's Nami running a bakery. I mean... I would go to it, <laughs> you know, like, I would go to it and order, like, hi there, can I order, like, um, the, um, orange, like, slushy, or not slushy, it would be, like, maybe, like, a latte or something, like, an orange latte or something, and she's like, of course, absolutely, and here you go, and it's Nami here, that'll be, that'll be $20, <laughs> you know, like, translating it into USD, everything would be overpriced, everything would be ungodly overpriced, but it would be good, too, it wouldn't be, like, it wouldn't be, like good food, but you'd order like an orange icing donut that would probably be like a dollar at somewhere else, and there it would be like 10 bucks. And you'd be like, ah, so Nami, I'm sorry, I know you're gonna jack up the price for a lot of this stuff. I would say I would probably put amazing, um, if it wasn't for the price, I would have to lower it just to really good, uh, for that, uh, just for that situation there. Sorry, Nami, sorry, Nami, just lower the price a bit, it'll be fine. All right, then we have Vivi. Uh, we actually didn't really know much about Vivi making food, but uh, Vivi probably knows a lot of recipes that are, like, you know, indicative of Alabasta culture and stuff like that, and so she would be probably be able to make some decent stuff there. Um, but we don't really know a lot about that. So, honestly, Vivi, I would probably just put her at good. I think she'd do a pretty okay job with it. Um, probably not anything super amazing, though. Um, the restaurant would probably be themed like Egypt, and I really like that because, like, I love ancient Egyptian culture and everything. So, but I, I, I feel comfortable just putting her at good. Um, Robin. Okay, Robin. Um, this would be a cafe. This would be very similar to Brooks kind of setup, uh, except hers would be a reading cafe. Hers would be this giant area. Uh, okay, when I worked at Dollar Tree... Uh, I, I remember one night it was just pretty slow and it was me and my boss working in there and I was just talking with my boss about like if we were to start a business like what would the what would the business be and I, I threw out an idea like man wouldn't it be cool to have a business where it's just a place people can go and just sit down and read and it's just quiet <laughs> we were gonna call it the quiet corner it never developed into anything it was just us bullshitting around like the store once we were just talking about this it's like man that'd be cool like just to sit down and just read because she liked to read too and it's like just the quiet corner and it's a place you go in and you sit down in a nice comfy chair and it would be like you can control the temperature of the room and there would be like snacks in there and you could special order like a specific kind of snack that you like coffee and tea uh, you know, there would be some rooms that have like a fireplace in there that you could sit down and just comfortably, and you would just read. You would just read and relax, okay? 
Um, and that's that's the premise of the business. You know, I don't know how well that would do or if such an, like the walls would be soundproofed. So you couldn't hear any sounds from outside. If you lived in the city, you wouldn't hear any of the traffic. If someone's being a loud, obnoxious asshole in the next room, you wouldn't be able to hear them. Everything would be soundproofed properly. And it would just be a super comfy room with like the softest chairs that you can imagine that recline. And they offer complimentary like bookmarks and stuff there. And it's just, it would just be called the quiet corner. All right. So that with the idea i'm gonna transfer that to robin's kind of bakery okay um it's not the exact same business but it would be a very peaceful bakery where there would be an area you could go there would be a front of it where you could just sit and just eat your bake baked goods your pastries and to just leave if you want but then there would be an, a back room that would be you know carpeted you'd have to take your shoes off and maybe put slippers on or something there'd be a nice giant fireplace in the center in the winter uh it'd be like a ski lodge like a really fancy ski lodge in the winter where you just sit down in front of this place when i went to college at university we had a really nice cafe and they actually renovated it so it's not even there anymore but it was a really nice cafe that had couches and like a little uh, fireplace. And then there was a big window that you could stare out into the campus. And in the winter, when like the, the snow was like two feet tall and like blowing outside, it was so nice to sit in this warm little cafe on this comfy couch, sipping some hot chocolate, you know, studying or reading a book or whatever, and just having this big window with like winter out there. So that is what I think Robin's uh, bakery would be, okay? Uh, in which case, I think it would be one of the best. Uh, then we have Orlumbus, Captain Orlumbus. All right, if ever there was an Orlumbus, he would be the Orlumbus. All right, he is very OCD. We saw from his cover page, it's like he wakes up at six on the dot. He has breakfast on the dot. He gets dressed on the dot. He inspects everything's on the ship nice and clean and tidy, not a speck of dust on the dot. He does everything you know, very impeccably and very methodically, that is Orlumbus, okay? He would run a very efficient, I think in terms of the business side of things and the interior decoration and the exact uh, presentation of the baked goods, he might actually be one of the best. I got to be honest with you because he's just OCD that way. Um, thinking. Either amazing or the best. Hmm. Hmm. I think amazing because while everything would be very uh, pleasant, if you spilled something, like if you spilled some of your coffee on the floor or anything, uh, he would just he would just go ballistic. He would be a very big stickler for the rules, you know. It, he would have like a big sign at the front of the building that would be like. You know, uh, it, it would say the standard, like, no shirt, no shoes, no service. But it would also have, like, no shirt, no shoes, no outside beverages, no pets, um, you know, uh, no dirty shoes, no muddy shoes or anything like that. Um, you know, you got to use a coaster. You know, it would just have this long, long list of shit that you're, you have to do. You have to abide by the rules while you're in Orlumbus's cafe. It's very clean. It's very tidy. The food is good. The staff is nice. But you just have to follow all these rules in order to, like, eat there. And if you don't, if you, like, spilled the shit on the floor, he'd be like, you're banned from this establishment. You know, it'd be kind of something like that. So I'm going to drop him down to just amazing. If other than that, it would probably be really amazing. He would probably lose some points there. You'd have to put up with some bullshit rules, but it would be good food. Uh, then we have Lucci. Uh, let's see. An assassin turned into a baker. Huh. You know, he, he's a professional. Uh, he wears the suits. Uh, he doesn't seem like that he would um, run a dirty shop or anything like that. He seems like he would keep things not, not as strict as Orlumbus, not as OCD as that, like obsessive compulsive, but he would, he would keep it nice and tidy. Um... I, I'm thinking it's kind of a Cavendish problem where every now and then the bloodlust might just take over him and he might kill somebody around the around the cafe. He would be, okay, you know how this would go? Somebody comes into Lucci's Cafe, Lucci's Lemon Bars or whatever. They order it, they eat it, they give a bad Yelp review. They give like a two-star Yelp review or whatever. 
Lucci doesn't say anything at the time. In fact, he would be the kind of guy, like, I want to, like, if a Karen walks in and be like, I want to see your manager. And, like, Kaku is the cashier and be like, okay, lady, all right, sure. Manager, come on out. Lucci would walk out. He'd be very dignified, wearing his suit and be like, is there a problem, ma'am? You bet that there's a problem. I ordered this lemon bar, and I barely taste any lemon at all. Do you even know how to bake? I was baking lemon bars with my grandma when I was five years old, and I was doing better back then. This is garbage. I'm not paying for this. Lucci, Lucci would not bat an eye. He would not be upset. He would be very, very stoic, very professional. He would just be like, I am sorry, it's not to your liking, ma'am. The meal is free. Well, it damn well better be. And then she, like, grabs her kid or whatever and storms out of the establishment. <laughs> Meanwhile, Lucci, like, takes out a little book and, like, writes down, you know, it's like, it's like, hmm. And then, I just made this more darker by giving her a child. I'm like, oh, God, someone's going to be an orphan. Uh, okay. <laughs> He's an assassin, mind you, okay? Uh, and he has the power of this cheetah, fr not the cheetah fruit, the leopard fruit. He has a little bit of the bloodlust every now and then. He'd be like, mm. So he would, he would honestly more like be like Gustavo Fring. He would be more like Gustavo Fring than Doflamingo, I think, honestly. Um, now, I gave Doflamingo the... I'll, I'll give him Doflamingo's original rank. I don't know. See, I don't know. I don't know. I think it would be run very professional. But uh, the Karen did have a point. The lemon bars, they just didn't have enough zest, you know? Um, I I'll drop him down to, uh, I think, I think good. I think he would do good. Um, you know, just be careful what you say about it, because you might die. Uh, you know, the, 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 the dying thing drops it a bit, but not as much as you would think. Um, Zorro, okay. Zorro's Bakery. Well, he would never be there because he would constantly get lost. It doesn't matter where he set up the bakery. It could literally be the only building for a one-mile radius, nothing else, just this one building with a giant neon sign that announces it's right there, and he would still get lost. So I should make another category that's just like no one would ever, you know, he would never be there. But now assuming he could get to work and start an actual bakery... I'm thinking a Japanese kind of style thing, uh, similar to uh, similar to Fujitora's probably, a little bit maybe similar to Eneru's kind of aesthetic. Um, but Zoro, he would just be very eh, I feel, with running a bakery. I think he would be kind of like Kizaru in that respect, so I'm going to put him in the eh category. He'd just be like, eh, you know, I feel like going into work today, I will. Eh, if I feel like making the baked goods, I will. Eh. Uh, next up we have, uh, oh, Sai, okay. Sai of the Hapo Navy. Um... I mean, like, you could do a thing where the Hapo Navy sort of, like, is, that's the sort of draw, like, that's the uh, the theme of the cafe. Like, a martial arts theme. You could do, like, a martial arts theme where it's, like, it's a bakery at the front, but he's, like, teaching, like, uh, kids, like, karate in the back. You know what I mean? He's just like, you know, oh, come in here and have yourself a bear claw, and if you want to sign up for Tuesday's, you know, karate class, go ahead, you know? That would sort of be Psy. Um, it has nothing to do with the bakery, though. I think the bakery would just be kind of middle of the road. I'll just go with good for Psy. Oh, Sakazuki. Here we go. Akainu. All right. Um... Hmm. Hmm. You know, I, I don't know why, and I'm going with my head cannon here. I, I I don't know why, but I think Akainu would be really fucking good at running a bakery. I don't, I just, I have this feeling like he would. You know why? I'm picturing you walk in. And once again, it's Japanese theme, just because these three characters in a row have a lot of that aesthetic. Well, Sai's aesthetic is more Chinese, because the, the Kano kingdom is more based on China. But anyway, um, it would be like, you know, it would have that thing, that wooden thing that drops in the bath and stuff. So it would have like a little Zen garden, and then it would have like a little pool of water and like the waterfall and that little wooden thing that like, you know, and then resets itself. And then, you know, you know the thing I'm talking about, like the name escapes me. So it would be nice to look at. The Marines would be working there. He would be eh, he would be kind of Gordon Ramsay-ish to the people there. He could have an attitude. He would definitely have a temper. 
but he wouldn't kill anybody there. Uh, if you run away from this bakery, you're a coward and you will burn! No, 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 I don't think he would straight up kill anybody at the bakery. Um, you know, not as bad as Enaru. Enaru had the god complex, and, uh, Caesar is a mad scientist, and Magellan is just poisoning people. But I, I don't think Sakazuki would straight up, like, kill the people. Now, if a pirate walked in, that's another story. But, um, yeah. Um, I, I just have a feeling you would sit down and order, like, the chocolate lava cake, right? I want to order the chocolate lava cake. And they come back with an honestly really delicious chocolate lava, like, you know, cake. And it has, like, a raspberry on top of it, and it's powdered sugar, and it's really good. And then it just cuts to Akainu in the back room using his magma fruit as, like, he put, like, magma in the oven. And that's the draw. That's the theme. It's just, like, have a meal that's baked with, like, the coals of magma. Like, you can't get much more environmentally friendly than that, right? <laughs> and, like, there you go. It's, like, literally the raw heat from the earth will make your food for you, right? And so he would just, like, heat up the coals and then put them in the oven and then bake the, the cakes and whatever with the raw heat of, like, volcanic, you know, uh, lava or whatever. And then he would give them to you. And it's like, I think, I honestly think it would be kind of the place that you would go. It's the kind of place you'd eat and, like, man, the owner's sort of a hard ass. You don't want to get on his bad side, but the food is really top-notch. You know what? Really good. I'll put really good up here. I'll put him up really good. I think he does a little bit more of an intimidating atmosphere. You know, be like, oh, man, if I'm two minutes late, the boss is really going to chew me out. Well, well, you know what? So would Orlumbus, though. So would Orlumbus, though. Orlumbus, I think you're going to get dropped down to really good, buddy. Sorry. Sorry, buddy. Yeah. Uh, and if Nami and if, and if Nami didn't, you know, charge as much, she would probably be in the amazing category. So there, there's a lot of stuff going on here, okay? There's a lot of moving parts to this video. This is a complex video here, okay? Yeah. Okay. Just make sure you understand that. Okay, so what's next? Uh, oh, Sanji. Sanji's next. Okay, so. There we go. I bet you're, if you were waiting two hours for that one, <laughs> like, Sanji would run the best damn bakery ever. Um... The price would be good. He would treat the people kindly. If somebody came in hungry, he would feed them without paying. You know, uh, you know, also he would invite all of his friends to eat. You can hang out with all the straw hats there. The pastries would be otherworldly. It literally ended Big Mom's hunger pang, okay? Sanji's, like, Sanji's baking ability saved an entire country once, okay? Like, that is Sanji. So I don't think anybody else on this list that's remaining would even come close. Um, Sanji has to have the very best. It would be like the Baratier. It would be a bakery that would be floating in the ocean, uh, very much like that. And it would just be the best you could possibly have there. I think it would be really good. Um, there would be options for more expensive stuff. He would be a little, he would do a little bit of anything. Like if you needed a wedding cake done, he could do that. If you just wanted a donut, he could do that. He could pretty much do anything. So yeah, he would have the very best bakery in all of the land. And that would be Sanji's bakery. Uh, next up is a poo. Um, I imagine a poo's would look like a 1950s diner kind of situation with like the greasers and stuff and the jukebox in the corner. Um, I imagine it would be something like that. It would be like a vintage kind of restaurant. There's actually one uh, not far from where my mom's boyfriend lives. There's like this 50s vintage diner kind of place. It would sort of be like that, except it wouldn't be a diner. It would be a bakery. So just picture a 1950s diner as a bakery, and that's what you get. Um, the aesthetic, I've always found that like one step above like, all right, this is an okay aesthetic. It's, it's, it's all right. It's okay. You know, I'll put him in good. Um, let's see. Shanks, huh? Shanks opens a bakery. What would Shanks' specialty be? We know so little about this character when you actually think about it. Um, I don't even know, man. I guess it would sort of be like Whitebeard, like the retired pirate that, that can tell you all these crazy good stories about their past and everything like that. Um, that would be, that would be Shanks' bakery. Um, but... I, I hesitate to put him in the same category as Whitebeard, though. Um, man, we we know so little. I I really don't know. Everything would be like like my, like Mihawks. Mihawk and Shanks would both have bakeries that specialize in making like food that's like with like like either like red food dye or like strawberry and like um 
cherries kind of thing or like red like raspberries or whatever that would be the focus and they would be like competing with each other and that would be really funny but i think i think uh mihawk's vampire aesthetic um triumphs there i'll put i'll put shanks in amazing just because i'm pretty damn sure he could make he could run a bakery really really well okay and it's just that we just don't know a lot about him okay uh then we have smoker Smoker, I got to tell you right now, is going to lose some points because you can imagine it would be a smoking restaurant or a smoking bakery, which, you know, is fine if you smoke cigarettes. Um, he's like, he, he would be, this is Smoker. Smoker would be pissed. He'd be walking around town trying to find a place to eat. Not a lot of restaurants do smoking sections anymore. I don't even know if it's legal in some areas to even have a smoking section now. I think it might just be like a state law to be like, no smoking sections. You can't smoke. It doesn't matter. Um, and so he would be pissed off by that. He would just be like, why can't I? I'm, I'm Smoker. He's like, sorry, sir. You got to put out the, uh, the cigar. He'd be like, screw you. And he'd just walk out or whatever and just puffing on his like three cigars, right? So Smoker would be like, I'm going to start my own bakery with blackjack and hookers. And no, it wouldn't be that. It's like, I'm going to start my own bakery that's going to have the entire bakery is the smoking section. Uh, so he would open the bakery. It would, call, it would be called the smoking room. And everybody there would not just be smoking. They would be required to smoke. <laughs> if you walk into this, if you walk into this bakery, you got to light up a cigarette. We'll even offer complimentary cigarettes. I imagine, I think that was actually how way back in like the, like the revolutionary war days, um, they would, you would go into like a restaurant or like a bar or a tavern and they would basically have this like clay pot on the center of every table with pipes in it. So, cause everybody smoked pipes back then. So you'd have a pipe, smoke the pipe. And then you'd like, you know, empty it out in this like center, like cup or whatever. It's like a, basically a giant ashtray. So if you were a smoker, if you smoked cigars or a pipe or anything, I guess this would be the place for you. I suppose you'd walk in, you have a smoke and, and you know, you'd be in there, just be a very hazy kind of area in there. And it wouldn't bother smoker at all because smoker has the smoke, smoke fruit. You just sit in this like smoking den and you'd have the food. I, I imagine the taste of the food would, it would be affected a little bit by the constant smoking in the restaurant. Um, so I would probably give him a, okay. Going into a place, like, the way I'm picturing this, me walking into a restaurant that's just, just smells like cigarettes and you have to eat food in the scent of cigarettes, that sounds disgusting to me. I couldn't do it. Um, so I'm going to go with garbage on Smoker. I'm sorry, man. Chopper. Um, Chopper, I think most people would show up just because he's adorable. You know what I mean? Like, Chopper would show up to this. And he would be baking, and he would have, like, you know, the flour and the whipped cream everywhere. And he'd be like, I'm sorry, everybody. Like, he'd be trying to bake in his, like, hybrid form, even though he should be in his human point. And people would be like, aw. There'd also be, like, you can get, like, a chopper keychain and, like, a chopper hat. And, like, there'd be, like, a little gift shop area. He would specialize in very sugary stuff. He would make, like, birthday cakes, cupcakes. Like, Chopper's Place is probably the place you would go if you wanted, like, uh, like a cake for, like, a children's birthday party or something. Like, that would be the place that Chopper, you know, that would what we would specialize in. Some stuff like that. I'll put him in the really good category just so he can be with Nami and also, like, can kind of even this section out here. Um, yeah, I'll go with Chopper being put there. That, that, that makes sense. Law. Okay, Law's uh, Bakery. I would love to have Law's Op Op Fruit. It's like the best one. It's just so ha handy to have. Imagine having the Op Op Fruit in like a restaurant setting. Like, oh no, we have to sweep up tonight. Room. <laughs> Done. Oh uh, man, all the tables. We have to put them all back. Room. Shambles. <laughs> done like it would be so easy to clean up the place you could literally use room and like take all the dust everything on the floor all the food that fell on the floor throughout the day all the flour and just lift it up and then just teleport it into the dumpster out back like, to clean the entire bakery from top to bottom would probably take five minutes for law with his devil fruit power you know what i mean every single night that's all he would have to do right so that would be good to be a very clean place to eat um I think Law would be... Oh, wait. Wait. Law hates bread. I didn't think about this. Law hates bread. Oh, shit. Oh, not good. Not good. All right. That's not good. If he hates bread, I assume that also means he hates dough. 
That's a lot of baked goods. That's all. I think in order to be classified as a pastry, dough needs to be included. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. So he doesn't like bread. Law, what does Law eat? Law eats like rice balls and shit. We've seen him eat like rice balls and stuff. Like meat would be okay. Oh, that's not good. Law hates bread. Um. Uh. Okay, hold on. No, 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 no. Hold on a second. No, that that requires dough. Pretzels. No, that that requires dough too. Um, bagels, pies. Well. Uh, Danish cinnamon roll? No. <laughs> brownies? I mean, brownies might just be chocolate enough that he doesn't care. Uh, waffles? That requires dough or, like, mix, batter. That requires batter, which isn't a dough. It's it's batter. Um, so I guess he'd make waffles. He would make waffles and, like, brownies... There'd be, like, four things on the menu. That would be the problem with Law's Bakery. You'd walk in, it would look great. At, at first, you'd be like, man, this is a nice place to eat. How come I haven't eaten here before? And then you go up, and then it's just, like, the menu is, like, three items. And that's it. It's like, um, waffles, brownies, um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying, banana bread? Definitely not. Um... I guess you could just have like, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think here. Just icing, just raw icing. <laughs> Gobs would not work because that's a dough to make the. Okay, so it's waffles, pancakes. I guess I can give you a fruit cup. <laughs> He's like, here's a fruit cup. I have some drinks. I have milk <laughs> and water, some juice. Be like. Uh, I think I'm just going to go somewhere else. You know, like, sorry, Law. <laughs> sorry, Law. You, damn it. He really hates bread. That's a problem. Ulti. Uh, okay, I put Ulti on here just because I imagine Ulti and Page One running a bakery together. And that would be adorable in and of itself. Uh, just from the antics. Like, that would be dinner in a show right there. Like, you just go into the bakery, sit down, and get some food to just sit there and eat. But then there'd be this nonsense going on in the freaking kitchen of, like, Page One getting, like, in a headlock by Ulti and being dragged to the ground. And just like, oh, Pay Pay, you messed up again. And it's like, but I still love you because I'm your sister. And just, like, everyone's like, what is going on back there? What is going on? You know, so dinner in a show, I guess. That'd be something. That'd be, that'd be you know what? Really good. Let's go really good on that one. Um, a rouge. Um, a rouge would be a holy place. Uh, a, a Buddhist temple bakery, so to speak. Uh, it would have one of those big, like, Tory gates out in front of it. Um, yeah, it would be okay, I guess. I mean, I don't think there's anything in, in a rouge's, like, religious doctrine that prevents him from eating baked goods. So I think it would just be good. I think it would just be good. Uh, we're so close to being done here. We have Usopp. Uh, Usopp, I think, he's kind of like a jack-of-all-trades, but I think he would be a pretty good uh, baker. I don't think he would be fantastic or anything. He's no Sanji. But I think, yeah, he would probably make, like, like cookies, brownies, kind of, like, simple stuff. Stuff that doesn't really require, like, he wouldn't be making any, like, three-tiered chocolate cake perfectly decorated with, like, a moving lion on top of it or something. But he he could make some pretty good, like, cookies, uh, you know, stuff like that. And so maybe that's what he would specialize in, just like a, like a gourmet cookie restaurant or something. Um, I would like to just to hang out with Usopp, honestly. Um, the price would be good. I think Amazing would be all right. I think I think Usopp, if he put his mind to it, I think in the same class as Bartolomeo. I'll put Usopp right next to Bartolomeo. I think if he just, like, worked at it really hard, I think that eventually he would be, like, an amazing bakery. Amazing baker. Uh, who's who? Who's who? Um, oh, yeah, I put him on here because of the Cat Cafe, because he does the Cat Cafe at Onigashima. I thought, well, his bakery would just be a Cat Cafe. So that, that makes sense. Cat Cafe. Uh, okay, so if it's a Cat Cafe, uh, that would draw people in just because of that aesthetic. Uh, let's go with good? Hmm, maybe the Cat Cafe might push it up a little bit higher. Hmm, hold on a second. One of these is going to the second row. 
I would imagine the good category would be in the second because that's more middle of the road there. But it's a cat cafe. People love cats. Yeah, all right. I'll put them up in really good. Uh, then we have Drake. Uh, Drake would be a dinosaur themed. It would be like a Jurassic Park dinosaur themed bakery. Um, and so like the kids would love that, you know, there'd be like little dinosaur cookies, dinosaur cakes, you know, like that would be the kind of place he would make. I think people would really love that. Um, I would put that in the category up here. I think the amazing category, cause people love dinosaurs, you know, Jurassic Park's really big right now. Kids like dinosaurs, you know, for like birthday parties, like you would maybe even have the birthday parties there. Like he would have a separate section where you could have, because he can turn into a, an actual goddamn Allosaurus. You know what I mean? I mean like like he turns into an actual allosaurus like can you imagine if you like if you like dinosaurs when you were a little kid like i think everybody did at some point you're like seven years old and you're like i want to have my birthday party and you get your birthday party here he has a little separate room where you can like have a big you know birthday party or whatever like there's a jungle gym or whatever and then he turns into an actual damn dinosaur and everybody's like yay oh my god it's a dinosaur you know like that would be like a dream come true you know so yeah, he's got to be, I mean, you know what? You know what? Screw it. He's the best. He could turn it, he would make the dinosaur theme, all of it. He would do an amazing job, I think. Okay? Yeah, Drake opening a, <laughs> Drake opening a thing. There would also be an undercover thing. It would be like undercover for like the Marines. Uh, so that would be like an undercover place there. Okay. Ah, uh, finally we're done. We have one more Yamato. Yamato. What would Yamato specialize in as a baker? Let's see. Cakes, cookies, pretzels, donuts. I can't believe I didn't put Katakuri on here. I really messed up on that one. Um, maybe um, cinnamon rolls? Haven't used cinnamon rolls yet for anybody in particular. Yeah, okay. We'll go with that. Um, all right. So Yamato makes cinnamon rolls. Um... I, I think I think she would do either good or really good. Yeah. You know? Cause Hmm. I'm just trying to think. We just met Yamato um not too long ago in the manga, so we don't know too much. Imprisoned by Kaido for most of her life, uh cruelly oppressed, unable to leave the island. And the first thing she does is, I'm going to leave Onigashima, father, and I'm going to start a bakery. The hell you are, you know? Um, you know what? I feel like if that was Yamato's dream to start a bakery, instead of going out to sea, it would be going out to sea, but also starting a bakery. Kaido would be like, you're not going to start a bakery. And Yamato would be like, screw you, father. I am starting a bakery. And she would try her best to start the best bakery ever. So I'm going to put her in the same category as the rest. As like overall working together, they could make a really good like bakery. I'll put Yamato in amazing. Okay. All right. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. We did it. That took two hours and 36 minutes. I have to cut some of this down because I have to edit some stuff out definitely. Um, but there it is. The one piece best bakery baker tier list oh okay uh but i'm uh this is i'm glad this is done i'm glad i finally got this done uh i i feel like i have to make a second part of this maybe not a second part like a new one but like add to this so maybe i'll add to this later i'll definitely save this and uh, i'll add to this later because um i tell you what man there's a lot more characters in One Piece. There's a lot more potential bakers out there. But let me know how you feel about this bake. Which bakery would you like to go to? Out of all of the crazy, out of the 56 bakery ideas that we have created today. By the way, by the way, by the way, if you guys, if anybody out there is a dungeon master or a game master, anybody out there plays D&D, you have 56 new ideas for your fucking campaign setting now okay so if you ever need a moment where the, the the group like oh the party goes into a town there's a bakery there's 56 ideas for you on what you can do i'm gonna put these into my campaign absolutely so you can use it too there you go 
um, super sexy, busty lady that has an orange-themed bakery, a poison-themed bakery, a beautiful guy that makes a bakery that has a serial killer as his other personality. There you go! Their ideas are just flowing off the table. Okay, anyway. Uh, everything aside, and the fact that my voice is almost shot, um, this was a really fun video to make. Thanks to all everybody for the support. Thanks to all of you. I don't have horse facts today. Um, and uh, yeah, this is the bakery video. It all comes together. Thanks for watching. Let me know what your favorite character bakery is, which character was not on the list that you want to be on the list. If we get a decent amount, maybe I'll do a second part of this. And let me know about stuff down below. All right. You guys have a good day. This will be Tacking and Barry signing out. Later, everyone.